Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode number 46, and this is a big treat for us because we will be talking about all sorts of tasty food and also Thanksgiving today, which is a big hol- um, big holiday tradition in the United States. I think we're the only country in the world that celebrates Thanksgiving. I'm sure there may be some other types of feast celebrations throughout the world, but none quite like Thanksgiving, especially with specific types of food um, and things like that. So we are very looking, uh, we are looking forward to bringing this Thanksgiving episode to all of you out there. And we hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving and have plenty to be thankful for. I know we've got a lot to be thankful here at the Untranslatable Podcast. And without further ado, I would like to introduce my amazing co-host, my good buddy, Jared. What's going on, Jared? Hello, hello. Yes, I'm thankful for the Untranslatable Podcast. I'm thankful for... Um, if you want to follow us, <laughs> go to the Untranslatable Podcast on Instagram. That's where really the most fun happens, if I do say so myself. But you can also follow us on Twitter, Untranslatable1, the number one. Or email us, the Untranslatable Podcast at gmail.com. Tell us about your Thanksgiving or your feast similar to Thanksgiving. Please also re- rate, review, subscribe, all those good things. Five stars, of course. That would be great. Um, I'm going to have to start off by saying, though, that, Chad, you're um, slipping on gator piss. Because not only do does one other country for sure celebrate Thanksgiving, but this other country claims that they invented Thanksgiving. Re- oh, really? Okay. And it's our... our cousins to the north they really have a, canada yeah they have thanksgiving in october you didn't i'm surprised you didn't know that i didn't know that for those no. of you that don't know michigan uh, Michi- chad and i come from michigan and we're a mere well i was like an hour away from canada you're like a probably an hour and a half away from canada yeah and um and so um i'm surprised you didn't know that yeah and they claim that uh they argue uh that can that canadians hopped on thanks the thanksgiving train early as in first, decades before the Americans did in 1578, more oh, than wow. 40 years before the American pilgrims. Um, however, uh, Eng- oh, excuse me, English explorer Martin Forbisha held the first Thanksgiving celebration by a European in North America in New Finland. Okay. Some people, mostly Americans of course, however, have argued that Frobisha's uh, Thanksgiving doesn't count as the first Thanksgiving. Because a proper Thanksgiving is officially held in gratitude for a harvi- for a good harvest, mm-hmm. not for surviving a dangerous icy hellscape. You know, me. <laughs> although, I don't... although, although that's also why one of the main reasons why we celebrated Thanksgiving um, as well was to survive that crazy icy hellscape. Um, and had what it, was had... the icy hellscape? That was just the the ocean. No, no, no. Um, over half the settlers died on the way over and then a lot of them wouldn't have survived the winter had it have not been for the help of the native americans so so yeah but thanksgiving has also really been kind of romanticized and and fictionalized a lot over history and did you know that thanksgiving is actually the holiday itself does not have roots in like native american and um like british settlers um pilgrims as we call pilgrims, them i don't even yes. really know what pilgrims are anymore to be honest. like pilgrims right. just seems like a like a made-up term that we've put on like uh these settlers just to give them like a friendly term to kids is what right. a pilgrim feels like to i me mean now. really they were they were colonizers in a lot of ways right um but but anyways what is interesting about thanksgiving and i don't know if you know this but actually the first official thanksgiving happened under abraham lincoln and he wanted to make Thanksgiving a national holiday to unify people because the Civil War was going on. So a oh. lot of people don't realize it actually has more political roots Ooh. than it really does <laughs> historical, which is kind of interesting. A lot so of really all those that. Confederate flag flying Southerners should uh, are um, supporting the North and, and really... There's, it's a, just a giant contradiction to have uh, both uh, that flag and uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving. Yeah, I would say so. Like, hey, this, let's get rid of this slavery and unify. I don't know. Yeah. I'm now just trying to. Um... Hey, Chad, 
The thing about Thanksgiving weekend, though, is it's not a, just about the dinner, which we'll get to, and it's not just, but it's also about just the entire uh, long weekend. There's a lot of activities that go on during this long weekend, mm-hmm. one of which happened on Saturday. Oh, the Thanksgiving, I, no, Thanksgiving and parades I, I on want Thursday, you, right? I'm not talking about a goddamn Thanksgiving parade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm talking about um, something that I think you uh, would love to talk about. You, and um, it involves uh, football, big tradition of fall, college football. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> I see. Big rivalry in the Midwest. I see where you're going with this. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Michigan, University of Michigan played Ohio State the last football game of the season. Uh, and got trounced by the Buckeyes. It was like <laughs> sixty-two to thirty-nine, which is still pretty impressive to score thirty-nine points. I mean, sixty-two I would say. is insane as well. I agree, especially against a team like Michigan. Right. And this game spoiled their season. They've had such an amazing season. You betcha. And I was actually thinking this year they might be able to pull it off. But yeah, I mean they got so close. But they choke every time. <laughs> there's a big game like this, they choke. Last season, they were the only Big Ten team to not win a bowl game. Every other Big Ten team won a bowl game. And then this year, I had, you know, I have a lot of friends around Ann Arbor, and, you know, they were really cocky this season. They called it the revenge tour. They did. It was right? pathetic. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> they didn't get their revenge. And now their, their coach, um, Lord and Savior Jim Harbaugh, is now 0 4 against Ohio State. He is the only coach in the history of. Of Michigan football to be 0-4 against Ohio State. Michigan fans are going to be hearing that one for a while from uh, people like oh, yeah. you. <laughs> well, you know what, though? It took a lot of... I was going to post some memes on Facebook. Yeah, and I was like, alone. Leave yep, it alone. and I didn't. It's, I didn't. Dude, it's messy. It's yep. messy in these in these Big Ten social media streets. That's there true. Are, um, there are... It's full-on... Michigan is a shithole. The state versus Ohio, the state is a shithole. Uh, like, just like as soon as there's any sort of talk about like, oh, these fans suck or oh, this team did this. Where, like, you go to the uh, to the comments and it's just like, well, Michigan sucks because of this. Oh, yeah, well, I, Ohio is a piece of garbage because of this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's weird, though. As I could someone... probably find it right now just scrolling oh, I'm sure, through my Twitter. I'm, I'm sure you could. I mean, my, my thing is, though, growing up most of my life in Michigan – I definitely have some animosity towards Ohio, and I don't know why. Yeah, same. I like, mean, same. I'm not even acting like I, 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 <laughs> I, I don't. It kind of hate them. Although I would never. I mean, it does seem just pathetic that it, that that's what um, the conversation breaks down to is, is more what it is for me. You know, right. like like of course this is where like like it like it, it almost it was validating in the sense that it's like. Uh, that like, oh, I kind of understand where this hatred comes from, but it also is stupid because it's just like seeing how quickly it's just like, uh, right. it just devours to that. Or it's like, wow. oh, for sure. But you know, I mean, as as you and some of our listeners probably know by now, I'm I'm a pretty big Spartan fan, and we only squeaked by a win against Rutgers, which in itself is kind of a joke. Right. You should, yeah, theoretically, yeah, you theor- should, uh, Michigan State should be trouncing them. Oh, for sure. I mean, and and they won fourteen to ten. So so I don't know what was happening, um, but you know, I mean, what what we usually say at Michigan State is, you know, a win's a win. That's all that really matters because we have a lot of games that are close games, and we win by a couple, you know, a couple points, maybe a field goal. It's not. It's usually not the most beautiful win. It's not the most glorious win, but. On paper, it's still W, you know? Hey, Chad, in the words of uh, Dominic Toretto, a win is a win. It doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a quarter mile. Winning is winning. Yep. In the words of Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first, you're last. That's true. That's true. Let's see if I can find <laughs> any shitting on. Oh, I'm sure you could. Let's start. So I'm on I'm on Michigan Athletics, and they just put okay. a forever comma go blue. You know, the game edit was right. over, and they're just being classy about it. Like, you know, right. we're still... And uh, the first comment is, sorry, we, we own you, O-H. <laughs> yeah, and someone probably commented, I-O, right? I'm gl- no, I'm glad Buckeyes uh, remind everyone that uh, they can spell a four-letter word. Buckeyes is capitalized <laughs> in this instance. She didn't capitalize Buckeyes, and someone's getting at her for not capitalizing oh, Buckeyes. that's funny. And then it says, no hate, happy now. holidays. Uh, um, that's funny. 
Oh man, I'm I've always I'll always be a, mich- a fan of the Wolverines, but I am just I'm still just angry this morning as I was yesterday. The stubbornness of this coaching staff has got to change, and there should be a, a lot of self reflection going on within the leadership of that program. I mean, they're not wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was just it. Seems so like I could I could almost like feel his tears on my own uh, screen. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, <laughs> that's true. Oh my god. But yeah, it this was, is actually pretty civil. But um right. I don't remember where it was like Bleacher Report or something like that. But um it was just like it was just it was a uh it was a shit show. Right. What what was funny though is I was uh FaceTiming with my parents before we started recording. And I think you know my dad's a Wolverine fan. I mean he's spent most of his life in and around Ann Arbor. Right. Um, he went. He got his uh, undergrad there. No, no, he didn't go to U of M. Oh, he, I thought he, maybe his he degrees are from Germany, actually, the oh. Academy of Fine Arts in Berlin. Okay. But um, but anyways, yeah, and so I think he was expecting me to like talk shit about it because, like, you know, I'm a big MSU fan. Honestly, yeah. I would have liked to see Michigan win it because, although you yes, hate Ohio State more. <laughs> well, I do and I don't. I have to say, I think actually oh Ohio State. I think Ohio State football fans are actually not as bad as Michigan football fans, at least to, okay. to Michigan State. Honestly, I can I don't think I know any Ohio State fans like in, like at, well enough to comment on that. So that's fair. And I've that's never been to Ohio State, so right. I just hate them because it seems like that's what you're supposed to do. It's almost bred into you. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you're not wrong. Growing up in Michigan, where it's like right. oh, they suck. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up just because I I thought the I always find the like like the predictable uh, Michigan is a shithole, Ohio is a shithole, back and forth. And a little part of me wants to be like, "Come on, we can be better than this." But I right. I don't I don't think that at all. I have no faith in, in these <laughs> right. goddamn animals. That's true. Uh, <laughs> so um, that after Thanksgiving, we'll get to mm-hmm. Thanksgiving in a bit. But after Thanksgiving, um, I went bowling for the first time, and like not first time ever, but literally I don't know exactly when's the last time I've been bowling, but it's been at least ten to fifteen years. Oh, nice. There's something about with or without gutters. Of course, with you can't you can't be over the age of ten and have bumpers. Okay. Or you, yeah, I meant bumpers, not gutters. Yeah, yeah, I know, okay. I know what you meant. Um, and he, he, kind of saying with or without gutters kind of means the same thing at the end of the day. Right. But um, it's it's I, I it's I I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a hyper competitive person. Oh, I know that. I played soccer with you before. I know. <laughs> it is really tough for me to walk into a bowling alley. It was me, my sister, her husband, and then um, one of the husband's friends who was also a, a groomsman at um, at the wedding. I actually, I like, I walked into the bowling alley because it was right around the corner from me, and I saw him, and I was like, "Oh, hey, I remember you here." Nice. Anyway, so um, it was hard for me walking in there knowing that I don't really know how to play yet. I cannot lose, and uh, the it, it it was one of the first thing I noticed was every time I threw. I felt like I was doing irreparable damage to my knee or my ankle. Like I felt like my follow through leg behind me, uh-huh. I was doing the motion wrong somehow, and I was like twisting something. And I was like, "Oh, that doesn't sound good." And I was like, "Okay, all right." I just, but anyway, also, um, um, the thing about bowling too is this p- bowling alley is known for having tater tots. You can't mix goddamn bowling. And handfuls. <laughs> oh, jeez, that would be bad. Yeah. Every time I I watch people like eating tater tots with their hands, and I was just like, oh, oh, oh no! Don't you realize you're putting your hands in some random ball that's just been y- sitting here for years? Right. Why As you're you, wearing some stranger's shoes. <laughs> why don't you just do the European way and use a fork? I did. They give you a fork, but it's every okay. now and again, like it's hard with the ketchup. You gotta stick it back onto the fork with what. And so it was just a it was that kind of <laughs> sounds like me a out. mess. Anyway, the first time I lost, I came in last place. But then the second round, I came in. Um, there were five or five of us. I came in third place. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I improved marginally. What were Everyone, your scores? Ooh, fifty-one the first round. Ooh, <laughs> fifty. Oh, excuse me, low sixties. I don't remember exactly the number, but low sixties okay. the second round. My sister. Her first round was like one, like low 100s. Oh, damn. Or no, no, excuse right. me. No, no, no. That's a lie. <laughs> it was like, it might have been like 90s. Okay. Her second round was like 58. <laughs> and everyone else except for me 
went down in score, and I'm the only one that improved. And I and I was making the That's joke. That's just I was important. Like, I was making the joke. I was like, hey. If you guys want to stick around and play like twelve more games, I'd win eventually. <laughs> unless the I didn't, unless are on your side. It's either that. I, it, it depends on what comes first, that or uh, a knee replacement surgery. Because I was, my technique was definitely mama hoo hoo. It, it, it was uh, painful. Okay, but it was. Uh, I also walked like like uh, a significant amount of time. I did some like. Uh, podcast recon today, finding pictures for upcoming episodes. I st- I wanted nice. to find a, a gift shop for a uh, oh shit. I know I'm fucking up the time space continuum because this the episode I'm talking about has long since come out. But anyway, um, yeah. So um, one more thing. <laughs> I had a, a like a I did like a lot of stuff this week, and I went to a concert, and I oh, um, stumbled nice. upon a, a new uh, artist. I don't know. I, I'll listen to him, but I don't know how deep I'm going to get into it. But I liked it. His Have you heard of Alan Stone? Mm-mm. He's a um like a singer, I guess you'd call him like kind of R and B ish. He's a white dude, but he's kind of got a and he's um and uh, he also plays guitar. But I I wouldn't call him. He didn't seem like a. I mean, he was playing guitar, but let me put it this way: he wasn't showing any like serious guitar skills while he was playing. But he was playing shit. It's not like he wasn't playing. Okay. But so like I'm saying, he's a guitar player. But that wasn't what he was really. That wasn't his forte. Although the ladies the obviously singing. loved whenever he pulled out the guitar because I mean, he would doesn't? like. Because he would like be playing and like singing to just without it, then you know go pull out a guitar and then, and then uh, he did a couple songs by himself, just guitar and him. He was good though, and I'll say this: there was a girl in front of us. She seemed very friendly. I, I didn't talk to her, but she seemed like a nice person. However, she was recording the entire thing on, on her, her phone, just switching back and forth between camera, just like her straight up camera, Instagram stories, and Snapchat. Oh, God. And uh, I and I just want to like, I so just want to tap her and be like nobody wants to see this <laughs> <laughs> like just right. enjoy like and she clearly loved the guy because she was singing all the words and I just want to be like just enjoy your like an artist yeah, that you take clearly in love the moment yeah yeah <laughs> for sure I was like no one wants to watch like literally a full play by play of this concert it's never anywhere close to as good on your camera I didn't even honestly even though it was a cool concert and and it was cool kind of cool s- simple uh, it was at like a th- uh, kind of a um it was a theater but not like a, a cl- i don't want to say use the word classy but and i don't want to use the word low budget either but it was kind of like um kind of like the royal lo- uh, uh music um music musical theater? yeah it was kind of like that in philadelphia it was that oh, style nice. of, of theater nice. where it's like so i don't want to call it like low class but i also don't want to call it like a theater with like you know nice ceilings and shit but uh he was good and um it was a good show. I, I liked it. It was. It was. I wanted to go to. Um. I the only the, something. The, what got me thinking about concerts was I just happened to look up events in Philadelphia, and I saw that Thundercat was going to be here. I love oh, him. Nice. I nice. was going to go get tickets, then I realized, oh, Thundercat. It was actually Mac Miller featuring Thundercat, and it was canceled. So, but they, they hadn't oh, taken yeah. it off like uh, the Google events thing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm not going to that. And then one of my friends mentioned that she was going to this, and I was like, yeah, I'll go with you. Why not? So. That's awesome, nice. It was cool. Yeah, I, I I like a good concert. I always I always every time I go to a concert, I'm like, man, I need to do this more often, especially with um an artist that like I actually enjoy. Not that there is, you know, it's always nice. I enjoyed this concert and I like this guy enough where I'll probably look up his music, but it's concerts always the best when you can sing along to at least ninety percent of the songs. <laughs> oh, for sure, I agree. <laughs> Although uh, sometimes I like to go to like an instrumental like jazz type thing to kind of stimulate your brain a little bit. Yeah, but those I agree with you. But those are usually more chill. Those mm-hmm. usually, if if it's gonna be something like that, I'm probably sitting down. I can probably order right. a drink like at a at a bar at, in, yep. in those kind of. Yep, that's I less agree. of a. You wouldn't see that at like a, a theater like that. Right. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I agree. I had a kind of an interesting musical experience this weekend as well. So I was in Prague with a few of my friends and uh, I wanted to take them to the secret bar I've talked about on the podcast. Well, the barkeepers are in Portugal right now. So, <laughs> I thought you were about to say prison. No, <laughs> thankfully no. <laughs> the bar got raided. <laughs> right. Unless that's uh, unless that's a uh, thing for. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Anyways. Um, so, so we didn't end up going there. But we were walking around um, Old Town, and we went into this place called the Groove Bar, and that was kind of interesting, um, although they only served beer in a third of a liter, so little, little baby beers. Wasn't a fan of that. 
I, w- I uh, wonder what that's about. I, yeah, I don't know either. Um, but then afterwards, we walked kind of just around the vicinity, and there was this place called London Underground. And so, so we were like, all right, well, it's here. Let's just walk down and see it. You know, if it's lame, we'll go elsewhere, right? We walk down there, and I hear what I think is live music, right? I hear a guy mm-hmm. singing. I hear guitar. I hear, like, rock music. We walk down there. There's a little stage. And there's literally this dude, probably in his 50s or 60s, like gray short hair and a goatee, playing guitar and singing. And he's a laptop next to him with basically backing tracks. And wow. this dude killed it. It's impressive that even a, um, a man of that age, no, uh, not to be ageist, <laughs> but like a man of that age, like, is that good? Not that he's that good as, at a guitar. That's obviously not surprising. Right. But that he's good with the guitar and with the uh, like production component uh, yeah. alongside it, with the like working the computer and what you're playing at the same time. That, I mean, I'm sure I don't know how involved it was, but that's still kind of an impressive feat, especially since you claim he was good. What was he playing? Originals or, or no, um, all covers. But like he, what? It was crazy, dude. He played an Iron Maiden song. Ooh. He played. We only got to hear three or four songs. Iron Maiden was one of them. Um, he played like a more classic rockish song. Then he ended it with Purple Rain by Prince. Ooh. And he killed it, dude. Usually I'm not a fan of people covering Prince's music because they don't do it justice. <laughs> this guy Prince killed would it. agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure he would. <laughs> <laughs> he hates it when people cover his right? music. <laughs> but but he ended with Purple Rain and it was it was awesome. He he was like shredding the guitar solo. Was he his, singing or, or what? Yeah, he was singing and oh, his nice. voice was it was crazy how he could like sing to different genres and it still all sounded good right but it all sounded like him right um he, he still had his he still had his own little uh, flair on it it was yeah just like so, a imposter right and so that was cool so we had a couple i think we had one or two pilsners there we sit down and the waitress was really friendly and it was our first time there and she asked us had we been there and we said no she brought Move us to Anglitsky. Uh, thankfully, she did said. speak English. <laughs> um, but she brought us uh, four little welcome shots. No idea what the hell they were. They kind of tasted like cough syrup. Really? But, wow. But they were free. I, I mean, hey, free is free. Yep. That's very that's very nice. You, I, I'm surprised to hear something like that happening in Prague. Mm-hmm. Just because I feel like there's a lot of foot traffic. Well, it wasn't super busy that night, so maybe that's right. why. And they probably right. wanted us to stay and buy a couple more drinks, but it was really cool. Check out London Underground for any of you people in Prague. And I think they probably have DJs there sometimes as well because the, the stage is big enough for you might be able to squeeze a three-piece band on there, like a trio, but I would say it's better suited for like a DJ. But okay. they have a little stage there, um, really nice. Um, and so that was really fun. And then we got some pizza and, uh, went back and slept and I stayed on a Botel. Oh yeah. I believe you mentioned your, or maybe you just told me that, but, uh, I, yeah. How was that? It was interesting. So, so I got there and, uh, and the Botel is right on the Vltava river, um, in Prague. And, uh, it, it looks like something my friend kept saying it looked kind of like, a. Like the interior in a way looked a little bit like a seafood restaurant in Florida, which is oddly specific. <laughs> but but he, I could picture it. Yeah, I, I like me oh, okay. Too. <laughs> like there was like a lot of gold and like you walk in and there's this big like um big like steering it's not steering wheel, big uh, Oh yeah for a um, ship. What's that uh, called? Mast? Yeah. No, is that uh, what it's called? No, the mast is wh- where the... Uh, right. The flag or the thing The flag and, and where the, the sails hang from. Right. Um, the, the, the And not the rudder. But yeah, it's no, the, basically a steering the wheel the for a ship. The back. Right. And so so um, so that was inside. And um, <laughs> and we, we were on the floor that was like, if you would have jumped out the window, you would have been right in the water. So we were like almost right on wa- water level. So uh, mm-hmm. was it like a um, cruise ship style boat, um, or like not, a, not nearly oh, that big? But okay. but they had a restaurant upstairs and a bar, and we had free breakfast um, uh, Saturday and Sunday, and that was really good. So was your room the size of a cruise ship? No, it was bigger because it was funny when when I when I brought my that stuff in the room. <laughs> right, I guess it wouldn't matter I, for you, but right. Well, I told I told my roommate I was like I was like this kind of reminds me of a cruise ship, and then I thought about it, and I was like no. 
this was a cruise ship, the room would be half the size, probably. <laughs> exactly. And we'd roll over and fall into each other's bed. But yeah. But it was cool. Um, it was in, an interesting experience. Did you get any pictures of it? I have a couple of pictures of it. Oh, yeah. good. Because I want, I want to yeah. see. Yeah, I'll post them. Don't you worry. Okay. Yeah, the the uh, Admiral Botel in in Prague. Well, how was it? Um, if you don't mind me asking, price wise, mm-hmm. wasn't bad. It was eight hundred crowns a night per person. For so a hot sec, I was like, whoa, and then I was like, right, crowns, crowns. Yeah, eight hundred <laughs> crowns is what, like, uh, maybe twenty, f- like 40, 40? I think thirty, forty bucks somewhere around there. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, so not too bad. And and like it wasn't. There's a, a bunch of tram stops right near it. So like on on Saturday night, we stayed out till about. Two in the morning, which isn't for Czech standards and European standards, that's not really that late. But right. for me, I'm I getting old and I'm getting tired. Now. So, yeah. But, Where'd Jared uh, go? It, it, <laughs> right. He, you just leave. You just bounce. <laughs> but, yeah, it was it was a fun time, though. Um, and we went to the castle at night, which I had never seen at night. And uh, because the castle's up on a hill, um, the view of Prague was just absolutely breathtaking. I mean, you could oh, see I could imagine. the whole city. You could see the river. And what was really cool was on Friday we had our, our Thanksgiving dinner, and we were also on the other hill um, at this really cool place and had Thanksgiving dinner. And I'll talk about that more during the main segment, but it was really awesome. It was a good time. Okay. All right. It, it was a good, good time. Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. go ahead. It's, I, I still just find it interesting how um, – that they just closed down their bar when I guess it, like they're both on vacation. Do it, m- multiple people like own or work for this place? Which place? This, the under the bar the the bar of the that where it's you just, played. It's the just a, it's I'm pretty sure it's just a husband and, and his wife. Oh okay. Oh, so they were just on vacation. I I didn't know if they had like employees or something. I was like they can't even keep no. going. But no, it's it's usually those two. I mean every oh, time wow. I've been there, it's just those two. Oh that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, an awesome right. place. That's for sure. Um. Now I, I'm looking at our Trello, and my question to you is: Do you have any shoutouts? Because the way you have it ordered is, uh, I, I, do. I, 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 pref- I prefer to hear your shoutouts first. Okay, yeah, I got a couple shoutouts. Okay. My first shoutout, as as a Spartan, I have to give this shoutout. MSU basketball won the, I don't remember what it's called, but it's an Invitational in Las Vegas. They beat UCLA and Texas. Okay. So shout out to the MSU men's basketball team. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but my other shout outs are much more Thanksgiving related. My first one, and I may have mentioned this last week, but um, shout out to Nicki Minaj for um, handing out all sorts of uh, Thanksgiving food. She handed out more than 500 turkeys as she helped residents getting ready for Thanksgiving in her old hometown. Nice. Shout in South her. Jamaica, Queens. Mm-hmm. 500. <laughs> a lot of turkeys man yeah how do you even i mean you have to like that takes more like planning than i think one would think because you can't just go to the grocery store and (laughs) fill up carts right and the other two shout outs i have um nick cannon was also out helping at a food bank i hope we're not giving a shout out for any of his stand-up i've never seen a stand-up he has stand-up yeah it's terrible oh god okay sorry we're this is (laughs) we're supposed to be giving love right now (laughs) right just because right. he's not a good comedian doesn't mean he can't do good things for the world. That's true. And he was doing something good. Uh, giving and back I do love Drumline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a great, great movie. movie. <laughs> um, yeah, and then my last shout-out. Wait, what did he do? Sorry, you, I don't think he, he, he was at a food did. bank um, volunteering. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh, okay, okay, okay. And then my last one is uh, from a, a gentleman I really miss. I talk like I know him. I don't really know him. But President Obama, uh, good old Barry. <laughs> Surprised a Chicago food bank and came um, to help out, and he was helping volunteers bag potatoes. Mm, nice. And uh, he just he just seems like a nice guy. Yeah. Like yeah. like I, I feel like if I feel like if I was volunteering at a food bank and he just showed up, he wouldn't act like he's better than anybody he's else. He's not gonna or, big time you. Right. But I think that's also. One of the things about being a successful politician, like you could be a super famous musician or, or, or actor or something and be a dick and that doesn't really matter. Right. But I think to be a super good, poli- like loved politician, you can't have that big timey thing in you because it goes against what like the point of being a politician. Because even yeah, someone that's a piece of shit like Bill Clinton, um, p- 
people loved him because he was great with m- remembering people's names and he like was a very personable person and, and a very great with people. And he and played the like, saxophone on yeah, MTV. Wait. Don't forget that. <laughs> and he was a great, uh, he was friends with Arsenio. Mm. But, uh, um, but yeah, I, I think that that's what makes people, that's what makes someone a lovable politician, I think. Mm-hmm. Is that you have to be able to just have like everyone has to think like oh like that's what you know what it is it's that whole um, uh, I could have a beer with the guy thing that people right. always talk about right uh-huh. I I also think though too with with Obama though um, I don't I don't think he does it for the publicity what do you mean by that I mean he just maybe he has me fooled I don't know maybe he has me <laughs> fooled. And he's playing his political game perfectly how he wants it. But to me, he just seems like somebody who, who, who would do something like that, not necessarily for the publicity. But maybe okay. I'm wrong. I mean, don't, don't get know. me talking. I, I like the guy too. Don't make. Don't get me start talking shit about him. <laughs> I, I think, <laughs> and that's not the point of the shout outs. I either. think. I, I think to seek that sort of position in general, like a, a, like that high of a position of politics. And then um, to like just follow that career path, there has to be a little bit of you that enjoys the attention. And I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with seeking out or enjoying that attention. Um, but I I, 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 I I think I'd have to disagree with you a little bit on that. And I don't even say that. And and I, once again, I don't say that to insult him. I just think that um, maybe he's good at managing like that that spotlight. Or obviously he's good at it, uh, but you know he's good at managing that spotlight. But I think he probably en- enjoys it, and I mean, especially now, you know, you know, he's still he's not, no longer a politician, but to his, ex- I mean, I guess it's also hard, almost impossible, not to seek out spotlight once you've been the president. But even want right. to be president, you kind of have to want right. to have a certain amount of spotlight on you. I guess maybe what I meant is his motivations might be slightly different now. Maybe. Oh maybe yeah. Not, you know. Yeah, and it, it, I, 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 even though you know everyone misses him, I miss him too. Blah 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 blah. You know, um, it is nice to see that he's he seems to be living a a good life post uh, like him and his family right. seem to be living a relatively uh, besides for almost getting uh, you know assassinated by a bomb a couple weeks ago R- they right. seem to be <laughs> living a relatively uh, you know good life definitely well, yeah yeah and and the last shout out I have is I just like to give a shout out to everybody who went out of their way not even necessarily went out of their way but just did something to help. Somebody else um, in a time of need on Thanksgiving or in general, I think uh, I'm going to get into my positive corniness here, Jared, so I apologize. But I think we uh, <laughs> I think we all could do a little bit more for our fellow our fellow people out there and make the world a little bit better place. And shout out to everybody who is has been doing that and will continue to do that. And with that in mind, that's why I would like that's why I uh, say you're welcome to all of our listeners for putting out such a great podcast every week <laughs> this is our part i'm, I'm doing right. my part <laughs> that's right another important part of our podcast i would say is um Ooh, yes. letting our listeners know some tasty new brews to try for all of those of you 21 and up or 18 and up in the czech republic or, or 16 germany. in germany right mm-hmm. so chan i'm coming back with the new beer of the pod review this is an interesting one so i did what I did was I essentially went to the store and I just stared at. By the way, I did buy some more of that Last Chance IPA because it's oh, delicious nice. and it's cheap too. Um, it's only like a, a twelve bucks for a six pack, so that's kind oh, of that's nice. really good. But this beer is something a little different. This is called a. Uh, this is by the company DC Brow. It's a Washington DC based, um, Washington DC based kind of craft brew brewery. Mm-hmm. I will mm-hmm. say. And uh, apparently it's the first craft brewery in D.C. since, if my internet would go, I can tell you. <laughs> yes, I'm of legal drinking age. Since the 1950s, there has been no D- uh, brewery within the D.C. Uh, you know, uh, area. Really? And, this, and, and starting in 2009, the duo, uh, Brandon Skull and Jeff Hancock, went out filling the glaring void in the local market. Two years later, the tax day, 2011, D.C. Brow Brewing Company officially tapped its first keg of beer uh, entirely brewed, packaged, and sold within the DC, uh, within Washington DC. And this beer is the Hazy Alpha Domina Mellis. Oh wow, that's quite the name. Check this out. This is dope. Now let me let me fix my. Uh, that my does lamp. look pretty awesome. Oh yeah, I like that. 
There's a bee there, and I'll tell you why there's a bee there in a second. And there's a bee right there. Oh, yeah, and those are like honeycombs. Nice. Oh, yeah. Woo! Nine points. Yep. (laughs) Watch out. Now, this is a big daddy. And uh, there's still plenty of podcasts left, so this could get fun. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, what Chad was wooing at is that this is uh, this beer is what what is it? I just lost nine nine percent, nine point seven percent, almost ten percent. That's crazy. And and if what I've learned is, of course, well, this is an India pie, pale ale, but mm-hmm. this is an imperial, and uh, which imperial is similar to a double pale ale. Mm-hmm. Which just means that there's a double amount. There's like a lot more hops, and usually that's balanced with a lot more barley or malt, something like that. I think malt, malts, not barley. And uh, keep in mind, I don't know what I'm talking about. And um, <laughs> and that's usually what causes it to be more alcoholic. And they claim that it is an Imperial India Pale Ale, brewed with honey, brewed and canned in Washington D.C. So I'm not really sure what that means, but. We'll find I out. Guess, won't we? I guess we'll find out. And let me read uh, what they, how they explain it, because it's only fair. Oh, and also, what? It, look what I have here. Oh, looks that looks like a Hefeweizen glass. It is, but that's all I have. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> uh, in the in the glass, a dense white head sits atop a hazy, deep, golden-hued pour. Substantial adjuncts were used for enhanced mouthfeel. Ooh, mouthfeel. Accompanied by a heavy, pungent, and punchy aroma with notes of grapefruit, mango, guava, pineapple, along with deep citrus and heavy tropical fruit. What were all those things they listed before? Not citrus and... uh, Anyway. (laughs) Upon sampling, the palate is met with a light bitterness with a no-hop burn on the throat. Best drink this one fresh. Hmm. Uh, Okay. And I'll give you the tasting notes after I give my own tasting notes, because my tasting notes obviously are... More valid than anyone's. That's true. Now, hold on. I'm about to pour it. I'll, I'll, let me pour it for you. No, I don't want to get it on my computer. <laughs> yeah, I would like you to not get it on your computer. I can see it, though. Interesting. That that almost looks That almost looks like a lager or or really dark Hefeweizen. Huh. It, 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 but it also, I would say, IPAs can tend to look like an, um, can tend to look like a Hefeweizen. That's like true. Like some of those tone woods I had looked kind of like a Hefeweizen on that were IPAs. Mm-hmm. Especially that improv. Now, <clears throat> um, I'll get a picture of this later. I'm, I have other ones that I'll drink later. I'll pretend like I'm taking these pictures while the podcast is happening. Anyway, um, what I like about it so far, I put it aside like I wasn't about to drink it, is that it it smells very fruity. It okay. smells very fruity. And it doesn't smell it doesn't have that aggressive of, of, of an aroma as you would expect. Okay. Like it smells subtler than it would be for a 9.7% uh Imperial IPA. Um oh, jeez, sorry. All right, I'm about to take a sip. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm You're stalling good. so much. You're good. No worries. Taking it in. Taking in the moment. <laughs> It is very fruity. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, not not very not. It's you know beer. It still tastes like beer. Let me clarify. But it is uh like you can taste. I like I didn't like if I, I don't really know what guava tastes like, but as soon as I ta- put it on my mouth, I was like, oh yeah, there's definitely guava in this bitch as well. Like, uh, sorry. Now I have to take a a selfie. And I sh- no worries. This really would have been better if I I decided to try a new um I decided to try like a new um vibe and I didn't turn on my other light in here. Not great for pic- taking pictures. Though, I'll <laughs> say that. <laughs> That's fair. A cool vibe is not great for picture quality. Uh anyway. So yeah, um I like it. But as I said, it, and let me tell you this, you can it's it's no secret that it's 9.7%. Okay. And let me also – oh, I sh- also probably should have mentioned that this is a uh, one pint. Okay. So 474 milliliters. Nice. And um, and so, you know, as we call it here in America, a tall boy. And it has my new favorite sty- style of, of, of um, um, 
of what do you of of, of um can oh it's got the no, sticker logo label. yeah it's a sticker label thank you uh-huh sorry i burped right into the uh you're good <laughs> i like this but this is definitely a treat like and uh, it's almost as i drink it now this is so like like that like there's a lot going on here to the point where it almost seems like it would be an injustice to drink this with any sort of uh, maybe like a steak or something maybe but mm-hmm. i still wouldn't even do that but okay. like to any anything with like a lot of flavor a lot of like unique flavors mm-hmm. i feel like you this beer would be a pointless thing to drink with with it because the flavors would just get lost right because That's this fair. this it it does take like a like you got to take it in it takes a couple swigs to even like catch it all would it be something like you could enjoy like on a hot summer day maybe? Would that be better for it? Mm, I mean you can because it, it is light and and fruit fruity. The only thing that makes it difficult for me to say yes on that is that it's very like it's it's unlike the improv I had, which was also a pretty heavy beer or alcohol wise. Mm-hmm. I believe it was eight point I believe it was eight percent, but this is nine point seven. This alcohol is very like, like you're very aware that it's a very alcoholic beer, right? So I think that's one demerit if you were to use it as a summer beer. Where I think a good summer beer, I I think for me at least, ideally with a good summer beer you can drink more than one. Like I mean, it's not just like you're not gonna have one summer beer. You're not gonna have one beer on the porch or one beer on your pontoon boat. What, right. are, you, what are you? Not an American? What are you a Canadian? <laughs> uh, this isn't Canadian Thanksgiving. Right. Um, and so I, I, this would be one where it'd be hard for me to have more than like two in 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 a in an evening, probably. Mm-hmm. Where it's like this is good, but I need to switch it up with something else. Like I couldn't just rock these, but I do enjoy it, and I'm almost surprised. I expected more. Um, I expected more honey. I mean, they say brewed with honey. I expected this. I expected it to honestly to be a little sweeter. Uh, maybe that's foolish of me. That's a little childish of me. Right. Well, but you, I mean, but there's the way bees they on adver- it. <laughs> the, right. The way they advertise it. Yeah, I would think. It's not yeah. not sweet though. I'll say that. But I just it's it's just not it's not a very pronounced sweetness. I right. don't know. It's very complex. I would say. Maybe I wonder if it's because Oof. it's a it's a double IPA. Yeah, I guess so. But it is it is strong. Right. It is strong. This one, uh, this one will be sipped throughout the podcast. Unlike a freshie, I could have like three of those. A tonewood freshie, I could have like three of those during a podcast. Right. And I mean, I didn't have to pee, but other than that, <laughs> right. So yeah, that's the DC Brow Hazy Alpha Domina Mellis. Um, look at our. I'm gonna Quite actually turn on my light so I can get a good picture. Go for it. Oh, oh. Sorry. Yeah, the it so- is, sounds sounds intriguing. Is it's, outside it's, of the room. It's interesting though. While you're drinking your honey beer, I have my ginger tea with honey. Yeah, I'm a big fan of honey. Yeah, I'm also too. a big fan of ginger as well. What I do is I buy, um, I buy tea bags off of Amazon, mm-hmm. just empty, you know, no tea in them. Right. And I buy ginger and cut it up, and then I'll get like green tea or mint tea or something mm-hmm. like that, and take one tea bag of that and one tea bag of just straight ginger, ginger. Mm-hmm. that I cut up, and then put a little honey in there. That'll that'll that's a that's a good feeling in in Europe. Sometimes if I'm feeling real frisky, put a little whiskey in there too. Ooh, all right. I feel like rum would also be good. Maybe I'm just not a huge rum fan. I would never okay. really buy rum for myself. Fair enough. But maybe, hey, if that's what, if that's your thing. That's true. That is true. Nice. Well, Jared, do you uh do you happen to have your oh. Rolex with you somewhere? Oh, I think we know what time it is. All right. uh, how about you go first? All righty. Um, so my first one for you, actually, well, I, I only have two today. And okay. I have decided uh, I only have two, uh, and they're both Czech today. But I have decided that I'm only going to stick with two uh, Czech ones a day so I don't run out of Czech ones before I leave. I may still very well run out of them, but we'll see. I'm surprised you haven't already. I mean, I got my, I got my sources. What can I, what can I say? Um, let me just pull them up here. Sorry, one moment. I just want to hear them one more time to make sure I'm not completely butchering them. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to go first? No, okay. I got it. So it is 
um, nedal bi, uh, bih za novi zlamadu grešli, which means um, I wouldn't give a broken uh, groschen for a new one. Groschen is like a... Like I was about a, to say, I don't even know what that a is. A groschen is kind of like a penny. It's a uh, thick oh, silver like a coin. Okay. Can you say it again? Sorry, I, you can tell I'm kind of only partially paying attention um, right now because I'm trying to take this selfie. Nedal novi zlamano greshli, which means I wouldn't give a broken groschen for a new one. Uh Oh, so it's it's worthless? Hit that ham horn, my dude. Oh, yes. Wow, this is a whole lot of... <laughs> I'm like taking stimulus, selfie huh? of myself while I'm like <laughs> sliding back to my soundboard. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I've never heard groschel, but... Uh... Greshli. It's uh, groschen in English. Groschen, it's the same, it's the same in It's the same in German. Like there's the drei groschen opa, which is like the three... I guess you would translate it to like three penny opera maybe. Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I think I've heard of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got one for you from my favorite country, my favorite language. Number five, French. Woo, 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 woo. And this one is, um, <laughs> en faire tout un fromage. And I believe you know what one of those words means, at least. Fromage is cheese. Thank you, it Dexter's is. Laboratory. <laughs> tout is, uh, uh, isn't it like whole? Yeah, it's like everything all everything. depends on the, uh, because like tout le monde means the whole world, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. What What does the rest of it mean? So uh, make a cheese. whole cheese about it. Make all cheese about it. Is make that, a whole cheese about it. Is that like to make a big deal? Yes, it is. Ooh. I like that. You're making a whole cheese about it. Why do you Why are you over here making a big cheese out of it? <laughs> or excuse me. Why are you making a whole cheese about it? Come on. That's how do like they it. How do they not use that in Wisconsin? I feel like that would be oh, so fitting in Wisconsin. That's awesome. Easy. Your cheese head is melting there. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. My my last one for you today is also Czech, and it is Ne prodal bih toza zlati tele, which means I wouldn't sell this for a golden calf. Is that the same thing as your other one? Nope. They sound very similar. They do. But they do not mean the same thing. So the other one, oh, so the other one is saying it's worthless, and this mm-hmm. is saying that it's va- so valuable that it's priceless. Hit that ham horn, my dude. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I'm killing it. Those are kind of not self-explanatory, but those are not surprising to me. Right. What I'm gonna do for for everyone, I'm gonna save everyone right now. My next one is Turkish, and I'm just gonna go straight to the translator because I don't I don't want to mess this up, and it's just gonna be a disaster. Good call. And, you know, it's 2018. We got technology. I'm just, you know, clearly not well prepared. <laughs> All right. Ready? Mm-hmm. I think I made the right choice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do those words all mean? Oh, I would have been nowhere close to that. Uh, it literally means reasons that would not fill a fig seed. So it's like reasons that don't make sense or reasons that are worthless? Uh, not not really. I mean, they're worthless, but for a, a, not the reason you said. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 hmm. It's nothing to get upset about. Oh, okay. Nothing to worry about. It's like about, you're getting upset, get upset about, about something that doesn't even fill a fig seed. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Is what you're saying. There you go. There you go. All right. I'll give you a, uh, a post one for, for uh, throwing out another untranslatable there. Nice. I have one more for you. And Let's I want to know, if, as, as we go into our Thanksgiving topic, I want to know as someone who, you, Chad, mm-hmm. who doesn't cook, mm-hmm. if you're going to get this. Excuse me. Uh, this this uh, honey beer is. Uh, <laughs> it's getting to you, huh? Uh, it's Cantonese. And it's. Ji Mao Suan P. And it is uh, literally chicken feather garlic skin. Okay. Chicken feather, comma, garlic skin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Can you help a brother out here? Um, well, we can go two ways with it. We can either go, I can give you an example. 
using the actual um well, yeah, I, all right, I got something for you. Okay. So, um, we, you and I, we went to, uh, we go to a concert together, and I'm so excited because I'm wearing these dope ass white Nikes that I have, and someone steps on them, and I'm like, well, now I'm gonna have to murder you, <laughs> and uh, as I'm walking up to murder the person, you pull me back and you say, Jared, Jared, come on. Come on, don't worry about those people. Ji Mao Xian Pi. Chicken skin garlic? What was it again? <laughs> Chicken feather garlic skin. Chicken feather garlic skin. So just also don't worry about it, right? Or it doesn't matter? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It means it's like insignificant. Okay. Trivial. So like you were kinda on the right path, but I wouldn't I don't know if that's I feel like that's it's 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 it, it, Oh man, I don't know how to do the half hand horn still. <laughs> Fair enough. So nice. Uh, the reason I wanted to end with that one because I wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, let me start by saying, oh, uh, you know, here at the Timely Untranslatable podcast, Thanksgiving was last week, and um, let's just start by saying two things. First thing is, we'll get this out of the way at the beginning. Everyone's family's Thanksgiving dinner is the best Thanksgiving dinner. No, uh, no, everyone, everyone, like the best Thanksgiving dinner. Is always going to be like whatever one you've had the most. <laughs> right. That's fair. Uh, the second thing I want to say is in my family, the tradition is that um, everyone has to contribute something. So everyone has to do something. I'm curious what your uh, what you do on Thanksgiving. It, it is not like that at my, my parents' household. Yeah, I figured. Um, well, <laughs> what's that supposed to mean? Uh, no, I don't know. Um, but what is it like? Well, so, I mean, my my dad usually handles the turkey. My mom will do usually some type of baked or scalloped potatoes, um, different salads, do the cranberry sauce in the jar or in the in the can. Um, what else? And and you know, I would I would honestly be happy to help out, but I think it's easier for my mom just to be like. Get out, right. get out of my kitchen so I can do my work. You know what I mean? I think that's how I kind of uh, operate as well. Like, I mean, I don't ever cook a full Thanksgiving meal. But even when I, like, cook for myself and people offer to help, I'm like, it's honestly just easier if I just do it. <laughs> right, right. Um, so before we get into what we're actually eating at Thanksgiving, because we're going to rank those. We'll get mm-hmm. to that. Um, well, I guess we should explain what it is. Yeah. Thanksgiving, I guess, apparently – uh, do you have like a histor- history yeah. of it? Let me, yeah, okay. let me let me give you the history. Because I was just gonna make some shit up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I wanna I wanna um, first of all I want to tell kind of the histor- historical significance and um, really the the true story of Thanksgiving has really been watered down over history because it's not a happy story of friendship and unity that we are all taught in school in the United States. So as I mentioned at the top of the show. Um, Thanksgiving really became a huge national holiday under Abraham Lincoln, and it was to promote unity and togetherness, which, you know, as far as that concept by itself, I really like that idea. I like the fact that you sit down with your families, you enjoy a meal, you might have to endure some crazy uh, political opinions or, or what have you with your crazy aunts or uncles or cousins or who, who knows, who knows who, (laughs) but you know, in theory, it should That's be. That's kind of day. the fun of it, though. It can, well, it can be. It, it or it's can like, be. oh, is blah 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 going to show up? Or like, uh. <laughs> right, right. But um, but yeah. So, um, Abraham Lincoln in uh, October third, eighteen sixty three, um, said that the last Thursday in November, and it's actually the fourth Thursday in November. So I was right. I go off the same calendar that I I go off what Abraham Lincoln goes off mm-hmm. of. Right. But yeah, cuz that's what messed us up. I assumed yep. it was the last Thursday of the month, but right. it's the fourth it's Thursday, the fourth of, the month. Thursday just, of the month. Yeah. And I was very aware of the fact that it was the we had five um thir- or five Fridays this month cuz that means you get paid an extra time or I get paid it well one extra time this month. So Nice. I was fully aware of it. I only get paid <laughs> I only get paid monthly. So it doesn't Ooh, really doesn't So it really doesn't really matter either mm-hmm, way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh Abraham Lincoln. So he said, and I quote a day of thanksgiving and praise to our um, 
beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens for blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies and a peaceful end to the civil war. So this is um, kind of how it starts. What most Americans are taught in school, especially in elementary school, is that the pilgrims and Indians... It's like a Disney movie. It, it really is. <laughs> yeah, we romanticize it, and, and it's basically where these Indians were really friendly and helpful to the pilgrims, and they had a big feast together. Yeah, yep. like they, they what, 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 how it was taught to me, it was a little bit more than that, but I was still, you know, a, a Disney movie story where it's like the pilgrims showed up in, um, in America and, um, they brought, like, they shared their, like, their, they shared their, what they both brought from their different cultures mm -hmm. and brought those two things together to have a feast together. Right. Where it's like, yeah, um, it doesn't seem like it was that friendly of a meeting. No, no. It, <laughs> hey, it's... let's sit down and, share a meal together exactly it's not it's not historically accurate the way that they teach it in schools um, right now i will say this though the the native american tribe the the wampanoag I'm, i think that's how you pronounce it the wampanoag tribe did help the plymouth colony with their harvests and really the plymouth colony i highly doubt would have survived without the help of these native americans of the wampanoag oh, I I believe that they were helped at some point, but I think there was definitely a one. I'm sure there are a lot of people that weren't helped, and then two, there was a point where um, those, you know, the the same people that they helped, you know, and I think I wonder was some of it like not on purpose. Now, I'm not hoping that it wasn't, or I'm not like in favor of, of these people, but like because a lot of it was like disease transfer. Right. Is that stuff that like that they didn't even know that they could do? Like that's because a little part of me thinks like. Like I know they gave them like these smallpox blankets or whatever, but it's like right. did they even know that that they didn't even know how to heal smallpox themselves? Right. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm the wrong person to answer that question. Right. I don't know why. Yeah. Honest. Like you're some sort of I'm not a historian. I'm, right. I'm not a historian. <laughs> I'm not a um, I'm not a medical doctor who knows about the history of you know medicine. I'm not. Let a, us know. A native, these are the questions yeah. that run through my head all day. Right. But well, yeah. I'm not. I don't think it was all necessarily. Um, on purpose, but but that's neither here nor there, but yeah, and that's so, not to discount that some a lot of it was a hundred percent on purpose, right? <laughs> and and the one thing I'd like to mention as well, because we are taught in the United States about this friendliness between a Native American tribe, the Wampanoag, and the Pilgrims, um, I would actually like to start off with um, in Native American culture, they actually have a different thanksgiving type of thing where they i believe right. it usually lasts anywhere from two to four days i think the times may change in different tribes they all have different customs and everything mm -hmm. um but they give thanks to the land and the beings that provide themselves as food and everything like that so um are we boring you chad no no <laughs> it's it's past my bedtime bedtime here in the czech republic <laughs> But, um, yeah, and so, and they also would thank, um, obviously, for the harvest. Um, but, yeah, and, and what's interesting, though, is the Native Americans, at least according to um, a couple different sources I found, they weren't thanking the Lord, but they were thanking the land for the food because Native Americans weren't Christians. Right. Um, yeah. Right. And at most Thanksgiving dinners in America, people say a prayer. Usually. Well, a lot of them are seen as quote unquote pagans um, because they worship the land, which is pagan shit, according to Christians, obviously. Right. Right. I think that's actually what they say in the Bible. Pagan shit. That's some goddamn pagan shit. I think that's what it says. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy verse three or uh, chapter four. Verse right. Seven. Right. <laughs> that's right. some that's that pagan shit. Right. <laughs> but yeah. So. So I think the idea of Thanksgiving is obviously celebrated very differently in Native American culture. And I thought it was important to share that with our listeners because we. Mm -hmm. No, sorry. I, I, go ahead. Because Be, because I mean, this is half of the, the, the historical story that we are taught in school, yet we're really not given any additional information about it. Um, so I think it's important to share that with everybody because it's a it's a voice that. Not everybody has heard. Oh, for sure. 
Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that this whole idea of protecting our children with these kind of friendly stories of, of, of the past and history, we're witnessing the, the damage that it does on, uh, on society. Listening to idiots like Meg, Megyn Kelly ask what's wrong with blackface or, like, or just like listening to people explain to you like, like why or like pretending that or, or claiming the Holocaust didn't exist. Like ridiculous things like this. Are I think I don't know I just I don't mean to get on my high horse but I think a lot of like we all we we try so hard to uh, to water down and 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 not make a, our our not face our history right right and, and, it's, and it's only doing damage exactly and that leads to my next point which is the idea of false friendship so as I mentioned what we don't are open taught, that gift <laughs> right when we when we are taught this in American schools. We're taught that, oh, they were all friends and they had a great time. But really, um, the settlers kind of pushed the Indians aside. And what most people do not know is, so the first, I don't really know if, how historically accurate it is, but if you, if you do some basic Googling, you can find that 1620 or 1621 was when they celebrated the first Thanksgiving, right? But then, you know, um, 55 years later... Um, there was actually this big war called King Philip's War. King Philip um, was the English name for the Native American chief that um, was the predecessor, or sorry, not predecessor, but the successor of the uh, of chief, um, I believe it's Massasoit, who was the um, Wampanoag f um, chief that helped out the uh, pilgrims, right? And so okay. what's interesting is then his son, the, the, the English settlers called his son King Philip, and they had a war called King Philip's War. It lasted three years, reached all throughout New England, destroyed 12 towns, Ooh. and this almost completely destroyed the Wampanoag tribe and also their allies, um, the Narragansett wanna... tribe from Rhode Island. You never want a war named after you. Right. The King Philip War. Right. <laughs> So, so yeah, Ooh. and, and what, what is, you know, so sad is the indigenous people or the Native Americans would say, you know, we are happy to share the land with you if you accept our sovereignty, uh, our sovereignty over it and you take care of it the way we want you to take care of it. But obviously we all know if you read any history books, well, older Those history books, crossed. yeah, the, yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, and sadly now okay. they're, they're not even, I have read in some historical textbooks now in, in schools in the United States. They aren't even teaching them things like the Trail of Tears. They basically say, oh, and then the Native Americans moved. They didn't move. No. They were forced out of their homelands. It's the same thing with uh, slavery. You know, you get they in schools, they teach a watered-down version of slavery and what that was. Mm -hmm. um, but in the words um, of J. Cole, one thing about the men that controlling the pen that write history, they always seem to white out their sins. Yeah. For sure. And I think some of this is also because we, we get this fictionalized version of Thanksgiving, because if you know that it was started more as a political plot by Lincoln to bring unity and thanks and, and, and togetherness, you know, why would you be telling these stories of these horrible wars and these conflicts and these struggles? That's not going to bring people together. Right, you know? right. Yeah, I guess it's kind of defeating the purpose. Of, what are you thankful for? Right. I'm thankful that we uh, sabotaged this Native American land and made it our own. <laughs> right, yeah. It's, But yeah, so I just wanted to share that history because I think it's very important um, for people out there to have a better understanding of um, the history and everything like that. What's also interesting is there is no evidence that they actually ate turkey. It was probably more likely... They had some type of deer or something like that. Also, there was no pie. <laughs> yeah, that's not surprising. Of right. course, there was no pie. Right. I mean, the, I guess the turkey thing, that would probably be more surprising, but that's not really surprising either. It just makes sense that deer is not a, uh, not a, um, like a, what do you call it? Well, like a um, factory farmed animal. So right. it's just not, it's not productive right. to, uh, serve deer on that scale Very true. <laughs> it's not really possible to do that mm -hmm. um yeah okay i mean thank well let's i, I want to reserve my uh opinions on turkey for now okay oh, excuse me fair enough but i will say uh so so thanksgiving 
fourth Thursday of every uh, November, every year. And what time does your family tend to eat Thanksgiving? Usually, dinner? usually around three thirty or four. Okay, I went to um, my sister's, my brother in law's. His, fa- his, my brother in law is from Philadelphia. His family lives thirty minutes away from me, so I went to their house. They eat also. They, you know, they they say four. We started probably a little after four. Mm-hmm. And um, I talked to my parents that day. You know, called them, and they were having dinner at two. Yeah. And I was like, that's Thanksgiving brunch. I was like, you know what you should do? And I was t- talking to my dad. I was like, you should throw some pancakes into the mix. And I was like, and really make it a Thanksgiving brunch. Maybe get some eggs in there somehow. I was like, ooh. And right. I literally just had, I was having my own conversation. <laughs> just like, this sounds great. And my dad's like, yeah, we're not, we're not going to do that. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. But there is like a very traditional, I think, uh, type of food and dishes you mentioned in our last episode the side dishes that mm-hmm. go along with it as well i myself when i was younger i didn't really enjoy them but now i love me some deviled eggs oh yeah i i i I'm, i could pass on the deviled eggs but to be fair it's i'm not a big fan of not warm eggs in general like cold eggs are kind of not my thing okay that's fair Ooh. nothing wrong with it <laughs> but i like eggs um so first, before we talk about um, before we rank foods, can we talk about your uh, Thanksgiving in in Prague? Because obviously absolutely. that's the least traditional of Thanksgivings, right? And it was on a Friday, but that was for right. logistical. That makes reasons. sense. I heard you yeah. say that. I figured just yeah for yeah, work logistical reasons. Logistical reasons. Um, but it was they fit. don't get the day off for Thanksgiving in Believe the Czech it or Republic. Not, no, I had a few students <laughs> tell me it's a shame we don't have the day off, and I'm like, well. If you don't celebrate it, it's not really a shame, you know. Yeah, I mean, also, yeah, it's not like you're going to cook yourself a Thanksgiving dinner right. uh, at home. Right. I don't have any of the tools to do any of that <laughs> stuff. That's for sure. But we had – it was a delicious dinner, dude. We had um, really, really good pumpkin soup. It was actually interesting. It was pumpkin soup with croutons in it and then also um, um, par- parma ham. Okay. So it was really good. I've never had pota- uh, uh, potato pumpkin soup with um, Parma ham before, but that was delicious. Yeah, I've never heard of that combo. Who who made this? Where is this food coming from? Um, oh, it was the restaurant. Um, and I oh, was it catered? It. Yeah, yeah, it was all catered. And it was all the same okay. thing unless you were a vegetarian. And then you could get the but, right. the, but the regular meal was uh, the pumpkin soup, which was delicious. Also was like seasoned or had had like some nice spices in it. It was good. Then it was this really tasty turkey that it was like two or three slices, kind of thick slices of turkey with um, like they they had. um, I don't think they caramelized them, but they like roasted almonds and like they cut like a little hole in the turkey. Um, I don't know if it was breast meat or what it was. But they, but they put some almonds in there and some other like stuff. There was a All little right, teeny, relax. teeny tiny thing of stuffing. Uh, a little too much. And there was a carrot and there were some Brussels sprouts. It's a little too much. It was good though. It was good. I'm not sure it was good, but it's just a little too much. I mean, it was a fancy. If we're restaurant. talking Thanksgiving, if we're talking Thanksgiving dinners, I, you know, if that's just the meal that they're serving, you know, power, more power to you. But I, I've, I, Thanksgiving dinner is not supposed to be fancy. Also. What well, I think it depends on the family. I feel like my parents try to make it. A little I'm, bit but more I'm, formal. I'm not saying you can't bring out your fancy, uh, like china, right? That sits in that cabinet that you're scared to touch, right? But um, like the actual food, Thanksgiving food is not fancy food, is what I'm saying. Right. They definitely made it, but fancier. it can be a fancy. It can be a fancy occasion. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think this was just different because it seems like it's just a fancy restaurant in general, right? Um, but yeah, so, yeah. I mean, they got to stick mm-hmm. to the, what they're what what they're doing. Exactly, like, I, I get it. And then, uh, and then what also um, was really good was then for dessert we had apple strudel and uh, vanilla ice cream. I'm more of a pumpkin pie guy, but I'm sure they didn't have pumpkin pie. Yeah. See, I'm black. <clears throat> you probably won't even know this. But uh, black people tend to be sweet potato pie eaters. I did not know that. I was actually, yeah. I was actually going to ask you if there were differences between, you know, white families and black families. Um, yeah, the food seasoned first of all <laughs> properly. <laughs> That's fair. Um, 
yeah, we we're, we're we don't really do at least you know we. This is the most broad of generalizations, but I don't really hear much about black people doing pumpkin pie. It's always sweet potato pie. Okay, which is I got a free pie. We'll talk about that later. Nice. Um. Also, it's a little different too because I'm from the south, or my family's from the south. I'm not, but my family is. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if some of the dishes that we have. I mean, mine's a little different too. But oh, another thing that I don't think white people eat is collard greens. That no, always we always no, have that at never, Thanksgiving. Never had it. But what what exactly is it? It's just like a. Um, I think it's like a in the spinach family. Okay. I believe a green is in the spinach family. I can see that because there's also mustard greens. But I, mustard greens, um, huh? Yeah, I don't really fully know what the difference is either because I don't. I'm not a huge fan. I mean, okay. there's nothing wrong with it, I guess. But and there's probably other stuff too that we'll get to once I. Uh, there are some things. I mean, that's the thing about you know. It's so interesting. Um, uh, the thing about being like a black person is uh, me. I'm hyper aware of like like I'm not hyper, but I'm almost fully aware of like what's happening at your standard American, aka white, uh, Thanksgiving, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner, and it's 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 always funny to me how like whenever I talk to like a white person, they're always like, "Whoa, what's that? Oh, you guys eat that? You don't do that?" It's like, yeah. It's like you guys don't even have to know what's going on in this uh, secret world over here. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, it's just it, I always find it weird that we're eating dinner oddly early. It's like why do we have to like okay, I understand you're going to do it a little earlier, but who two o'clock? It's like this is that's breakfast. really early. Yeah, if you get me drinking enough, I'm not waking up until noon. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you get enough of these of these hazy alpha domino melises in me to the point where I can't even say that uh, name. Then I'm anyway. Uh, all right. Top ten dishes. Top ten ish. There's a little more than ten. Should I just go through my list? Sure. Let's hear it. So as I started by saying, um, well, let me start by saying this. This is not. These are not. This is not just. This is once again my family because that's really all I know. Mm-hmm. And I've been to other Thanksgivings, but obviously I've been mostly with my own freaking family, and so. It's going to be stuff that is at my family's Thanksgiving. And this list is obviously influenced by what I like. But I'm going to say that there's also – it's also ranked just by what I can see – what I've seen go and what I see people be most attracted to year over year. So it might not even be something that I really eat that much of, but I'm still going to might put it high because I know that I don't like it. But clearly that's me. That's not everyone else. Right. Um. So – and I have – both desserts and food mixed into one list. Okay, nice. And I mentioned at the beginning, we'll start with number one. I mentioned at the beginning that in our family, everyone usually cooks at least one thing. In our family, I mean, this is this is more of a my personal family's tradition mm-hmm. because usually my dad is doing most of the cooking. And what we do is we usually have it at my grandma's house or at my cousin's house in Colorado. My family okay. is in Denver. Because I have I have cousins there, uh, two, like a, a couple cousins there, and so they had, and so usually someone always does something, and my dad usually does most of it, okay, or most of the big things like turkey, some other big things. What I have used to, st- what I started doing was back in the day was the cranberry relish. We do two different types, um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about now. What I do now, for the past couple of years, what I've been doing is the mac and cheese, and I Ooh, right. give this whole preamble. Because mac and cheese is easily number one. And I don't say that that has, that has nothing to do with me. Yes, okay. I cook it, so it has to do with me and the fact that I don't mess it up. But there's two things. One, I've almost been watching this recipe be made like I'm a ninja apprentice. Like I've watched okay. my parents <laughs> make it. I've, I've made it accompanied by them. Then I've made it with them like looking over their shoulders slightly as I make it. And then they just say, make the mac and cheese. So it's been a prog- progression. Okay. And so usually when I cook at home, I like to cook. I- I'll, get a- I'll get a little creative, you know, mix it up a little bit. Not, But when I'm doing this, it is to the recipe. <laughs> mm-hmm. No improv. And so I say it's number one, but I-, I also don't mean I don't really. It's only half a brag because I'm just following a recipe. But everyone loves it. And mac and cheese is always a staple in um, in black homes. I we we in the black community something I'm sure you don't know. We there's common in black Twitter. I, I, this is like think back to our black Twitter episode. Something that black people often make fun of 
on black Twitter is white people's mac and cheese. I don't fully know why, but I know. Our, <laughs> um, it's probably but it's I not know that's definitely correctly, a right? Probably. Do you, so that's do number you, one. Do you actually season mac and cheese? Yeah. What do you What do you put in it? What's the What's the secret? Uh, well, and the one I make, salt and pepper, obviously. Um, there's a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, tiny bit of hot sauce. There's a tiny bit of um, of um, mustard powder. Okay. Like it's 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 seasoning, Ooh, but okay. it's mustard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just so like it's paprika. a little spicy. No, 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 no. It's no, not spicy. Okay. It's just properly seasoned. That's the thing that I don't think. I, that's White that's what I think get? is the big is the big separation here. Is there's a difference between spicy and properly seasoned. It's not spicy. Okay. But but it is well seasoned. I would say. Anyway. Um. By the way, feel free to give your commentary on what your top ten list would be going along. I probably should have not started at number one as I, but I already did it. So. Right. <laughs> um. Where would you put mac and cheese in your home? I mean, it's easily top five. Easily top five. I mean, that's a that's a Thanksgiving staple in America, right? I would say for the most part, yeah. It seems like some people might also do the mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. I we never have mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. We do either sweet potatoes or baked potatoes. Sometimes, actually, no. We we also sometimes do mashed potatoes. Now that I think okay. about it. Because you get that gravy and you put the gravy on the the cutlets of turkey, and the mashed potatoes. Right. That's pretty good. Right, right. Um, now, number now two, you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you uh, m- making you miss your mom. That, that as well. <laughs> um, number two is something I don't. I'm not a huge fan of, but it's you can't argue with the results, and that's the stuffing. And that's my mm-hmm. dad. He does the turkey, so I, but I don't think he does. I think there's a difference between stuffing and dressing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I think his would be dressing because it's not made in the turkey. Okay. Yes, yeah, stuffing. Is I think made stuffing in the is made in the turkey. I agree. Is I'd not. agree. Okay. And I'm I I I I'll eat a little bit of it, but I'm, I don't really need any stuffing in my life. Okay. But like once again, you can't argue with the results uh, at the at the dinner table. Right. It's it's oh, it's sure. a it's a crowd pleaser, and it's and you always hear it being a crowd pleaser. Mm-hmm. Number three, speaking of, of potatoes, the sweet potato casserole. Okay. This sweet potato casserole. First of all, it's 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 a gen, it's a recipe passed down from my great grandmother, nice. and we still have it, the original one, written on a piece of paper. And That's awesome. um, it is the most gluttonous slash d- like delicious thing in the. It's dessert. I mean, it, it could easily be put up next to the uh, any of the pies or cakes so, as like, far as sugar it? and. It's so it's mashed sweet potatoes. You mash them up, and then what you do is you make and you you in there you put some vanilla, cinnamon, but a lot of butter, obviously. Okay. Um. Nice. Um. Other sort of things to sweeten it up: nutmeg, all that shit. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> brown sugar, you know. Mm-hmm. Mix that all together. Put that in a pot or pan, like a cooking pan situation. Mm-hmm. Cover that with a crumbly kind of topping, which is a mix of. Cornflakes, cr- um, walnuts, uh, um, um, brown sugar. Oh, jeez. Okay. Obviously, butter in there as well. <laughs> oh, mix man. that all. Mix that all together. The butter is more of a th- so it kind of sticks together. Mix right. that all together, and that's the topping. Stick that in the oven. Okay. Pull that out, and then, <laughs> and then that's it. And it's just, um, it's essentially just like dessert, but it's we eat it with dinner, and every t- and it's. And it's the close. It's 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 so good, and it's literally just it's just sh- sweet potatoes and sweetness. So I mean, how could you go wrong? Right. How do you guys tend to do your sweet uh, sweet potatoes? I don't. I don't think we. I don't All think right. We have sweet potato casserole. Number four. <laughs> I feel like I'm like not only informing our audience about my top ten list, but I'm informing you about what we what people eat at Thanksgiving. Yep. You're like, huh? It's okay. True. <laughs> my so obviously every Thanksgiving has turkey. Yep. But my number four is actually going to be roast beef. My dad usually does some sort of roast beef in addition to a turkey every Interesting. year. Interesting. Okay. And it is delicious. I mean, first of all, that's going to be turkey any day of the week. Um, number six, or excuse me, number five is the cake. The cake selection. Not once pie? again. I'm saying, <clears throat> not in my family. We have pies. But as far as my top ten list, mm-hmm. I love pies. By the way, I love pies. 
But if we're talking about the best desserts um, year after year, that's reliable, like people ask for, once again, this is not just me. This is the stuff that everyone asks for every year. There's two pies. One of them is made by my mom, and it's a German chocolate pie. Nice. Another one is made by my cousin Eileen. Uh, some people call her Rhonda. That's her middle name. I call her Eileen. Uh, and that is a red velvet cake. Ooh. Those two cakes right. are insane. And so, um, yes, I love pies. And we have pies there, too. We usually have a uh, pecan pie. Pecan pies I don't really like, though, because they're a little too sweet for me. Okay. Um, and honestly, I can get a better, like, I can get, like, I, if I'm going to have pecan pie, I might as well just have more of that sweet potato casserole. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um. And then so number six for me is um, green beans. But I'm going to have to put it with an asterisk. Okay. I don't do green bean casserole. Get that shit out of here. Okay. I don't want don't like cheese. It, huh? in, I'm not a fan. It's too much going on. I don't, think we Honestly, put cheese, I don't think we put cheese in ours. Okay. I'm still not a huge fan of green bean casserole. Okay. But um, I like maybe I like crunchy, yours. I like the crunchy onions on it. Yeah, I do like crunch. I like onions. But I'd rather just have – see, that's the thing. I put green beans at six because I do love green beans. Mm -hmm. But the green beans that usually come from Thanksgiving are not usually the way I like them. I usually like a snappier green bean. That's fair. That's fair. But most people, like the traditional way that we always do it is not really the snappier ones. I still eat them and I like them. But it's like, you know, if I were – ideally I'd like the thinner, like crunchier ones right. and not, not the more mushier ones. But they're still good. And once again, this is not just me. This is a consensus by the family. Right. Now, I didn't. I didn't pull them. I just <laughs> have been around them too much. Number seven. I don't think. I think this is also might be a black family exclusive. Pound cake, or southern thing. One of those two. I've I've never had pound cake before. Do you know what it is? I, isn't it? Um, Speaking of decadence, <laughs> isn't it like? Is it anything like Angel's food cake? Uh, Angel is Angel food cake like the things that you put like strawberry short like you make the strawberry shortcakes out of? I think you can, yeah. Um, it is like those, but it's way more it, like is it. It, more it, it looks like that in consistency. No, it's not sh m more sugar. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know, but I'm, I say it's like that in the sense that it it's it's different in the sense that it's more. It's not as light and 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 like Angel food cake, especially like those little individual ones, are very light. Pound cake is not light. Like like it's. It's a it's a thicker yeah, but it is very similar to that as I look at it. Okay. But I think they call it pound cake because it has a pound of butter in it. By the way, did I mention what? my family southern pound of butter? I believe that's okay. where that comes from. Could be. Pound of butter uh, or pound of sugar? A pound of each four ingredients. Flour, butter, eggs, and sugar. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I guess there is a pound of butter, but it is balanced by a pound of three other things as well. <laughs> so that's number four. Number eight, number eight theoretically could be higher, but I'll explain myself. Number okay. eight is the rolls. Okay, what kind of rolls do you have? It varies. Okay. My mom, if if my mom's uh, up for it, because it is kind of it is like, um, a, kind of a lot of work and and not a, a good place to focus a lot of work. Um, she makes a homemade one that's great. Um, but you know any sort of roll is really great. That's the thing about rolls though, and that's why I, I have it at eight. It's because they're amazing, but it's essentially crack, and it's like I could like <laughs> That's you true. could take away all this and I would still just be popping these rolls nonstop. Like oh, like for sure. there's there's no like you can get so much more from from um from mac and cheese or from stuffing or from sweet potato casserole, but I could just as easily be addicted to the roll. Like I even more addicted maybe even to the rolls. Oh yeah, but it's I not. Agree. Where I would theoretically, if I'm smart about it, that's not where I want my Thanksgiving calories to go. It's empty calories of just bread, right. which is del who doesn't love it's bread? It's delicious, but yeah, I agree with you. But it's just a waste of space, especially on Thanksgiving. See, so that's why I keep it low. Because I found myself, I had like f three or four, and I was like, after like two, I was like, I don't need these. They're just right. like the bowl is so right in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> it's really <laughs> tempting. Right. It was like the bowl's right there, and they're so good. My parents actually. Um, they go sometimes to, uh, you do a potato one as well. Those are good. Oh, those my mom will sometimes good. do a potato one. Okay, that would be good. My parents go to kind of this fancy restaurant in Chelsea, and you can buy like a pre-made, like the dough's already there. All you do is pop them in the oven. Right. And I don't know what they make these rolls <laughs> out of, but they are also like crack, and it is so I'm good. The, 
I'm laughing looking at your face because I could see the joy in your face. They're, de- they're <laughs> delicious. Like sli- you're kind of like looking off into the distance. <laughs> There's I'm this slight smile. Rolls, yeah. <laughs> they're so good, man. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're delicious. And, and the, I think it's, you know, my, my family has, you know, unfortunately gotten smaller and smaller every year for Thanksgiving because, you know, my grandparents passed away. My great aunt passed away. I mean, this year my parents for Thanksgiving it was just my mom and my dad. So, it's like, what, what's with you? What? Where do your um your dad has two daughters, right? Yeah. Um. And where, they, where do they go? They were in my my sister's city. other side of the family. Yeah, uh, she was in Bay City, and then uh, Denise is she might have been working, and she's in Columbus, Ohio. So okay. So yeah, so they're they're not really that close. Um, we actually have That's a kind friend. Of a bummer. Yeah, we have a friend from Germany that that um, sometimes will come for Thanksgiving. She has the last two years, I think, and this year she couldn't make it. So, so it's just my parents, and uh, I feel like if you're only cooking for two, and not a whole family, you gotta do what's easy and convenient, you know? Right, right. Number nine, collard greens. Once again, okay. <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan, but um, people like it. Number ten. Is the cranberry sauce? We do it two different ways. One I could say is more of a kind of a garnish. We haven't done it that way in a while. Another way we do it is like in a pot where you get cranberries. I, usually I do this as well. Okay. And then you put it in a pot, and then you also get some port wine, mm-hmm. and pour that in there as well, and then kind of let that stew together, and then you let it sit for a bit. You serve it cold. It's not served hot. Right. But, um, right. It's um it's pretty good as well. Number ten, or excuse me, number eleven is turkey. Asterisk. Okay. Why, why the asterisk? Fried turkey. Oh, that would be good. Have you ever had a fried turkey? No. Speaking of crack, it's all. First of all, it's all about the skin too. Is there <clears> anything <throat> like but, fried chicken? Nah, come on. We're talking no. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's no. I would if 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 you were had fried chi- fresh fried chicken or a fresh fried turkey in front of me. I would punch the turkey uh, off the plate okay. and grab that chicken ten out of ten. Okay. But turkey's not that great. Like, I, like Thanksgiving is not is all about the sides first of all, mm-hmm. and I don't find turkey to be that great. And the reason I left turkey at eleven is because I've only had fried turkey a couple times. Like usually okay. I'm not, so it's not really fair for me to put it higher because I don't usually have it that way. Although my family in, that's in Denver this year, I didn't join them. Obviously, I was here in Philly, but my excuse me, my family in Denver had a fried turkey, and I was so bummed. I was like, ah, without me. But um, the fried turkey, right. if I had it, that would go higher on the list. Okay. Because it's very good, and I think it's a better use of a, of a otherwise kind of uninteresting meat. Even right. chicken's better than turkey yeah. to me. Like, a, How do you feel about turkey? I mean, Am I, I, I mean, raining I, on your parade? I mean, I like it, but it's not my number one meat to go to. Right. Well, that's the thing. I, I always eat it. I'm always happy to have it. But I'm not like – it's not what I'm most excited about on Thanksgiving by any means. Right. I mean, you heard my list. Those are the things I'm most excited about, not uh, not the turkey. Right. Oh, oh sure. also, every now and again, if my dad doesn't do roast beef, I just realize he also will do ribs sometimes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, And then number 12 is uh, – oh, also, I will say this. Uh, back to the turkey. So, yeah, as I said, like, I, like it's never the thing I'm looking most forward to the most. However mm-hmm. – um, and not to throw the in-laws under the bus, but um, the turkey was not ready in time. Uh-oh. And, um, Watch out. Felt a little weird not having any turkey. And so what we had instead was number 12, which is a popular second meat to turkey on Thanksgiving. Do you know what that is? Um, ham. Oh, okay. Not a huge ham fan. I- I'm not a big fan of ham. Yeah, I'm not It doesn't either. do much for me. And so I ate it, and it's fine. But I was like, I, I, I like if I'm, it's between turkey and ham, I'd rather have turkey. Oh, me too. Um, me too. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so we had ham instead, which was fine. But whatever, it, you know, the mac and cheese was great, even though it wasn't from my family. Um, and I'll and see, here's a <clears throat> sorry. Let me take another sip of this uh, hazy Alpha Domino Mellis. <clears throat> I felt bad for my brother-in-law Jeff for his mom. She was running around like a goddamn like a workhorse. And I wanted to tell her, I was like, just relax, enjoy yourself. I understand that you want to, like, be a good host and stuff. But, like, like, is it worth it if, 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 like, if you end the day 
and you and you're exhausted and you had like two bites to eat because you were running around making sure everything was on point. Oh, also, the microwave and oven broke or some shit like that. Uh oh, that's not good. So they were like using like they're also like using like a, a toaster oven to make to to fit like huh. warm up like the rolls and shit. Okay. And it was just like a shit show. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> but it was good, and everything turned out great. I'm not here. I'm not shitting on the food because everything did turn out great, and great in the sense. I mean, it's you know, once again, the best Thanksgiving is always going to be your own family's Thanksgiving. Yeah, and that's, that's no true. offense to anyone's other Thanksgiving. That's just how it is. Right. I I agree. I agree 100. Um, percent How did it feel not being home on Thanksgiving? You talked to your parents, I assume. Mm, yeah, we talked. It was fine. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think. It definitely helped having having a Thanksgiving with the other English teachers here in the Czech Republic. It was also right. really nice to actually have like it was a pretty fancy dinner. It was really good. Sounds like it. I was full. They also had ro- well, not really rolls, but they had bread. And that was really good. Um, had my favorite Czech beer there, Krušovice. So I was happy about that as well. It was on tap. Was that the beer of the pod? No, no, that was oh, okay. Sviani. From hey, by the way, episodes good. Yeah. I hate to. I I almost didn't want to do it, but since I'm gonna, since I just thought of it on the podcast, I'll uh-huh. do it in public. <laughs> okay. Um, I think, and this is me to you as a friend. Uh-huh. Uh I think, as far as posting things on Instagram goes, don't be afraid to make your picture when you're if you're gonna post multiple pictures. Don't be afraid to make your face be the first <laughs> one in that list of pictures. I think you're selling yourself short by not, and I think you're doing. Our Instagram page a disservice by not having your face be the one that shows up on on on, on, on rather than That's just fair. some dark ass picture of a, a, beer. Oh, a beer. I think right. your face does way more good than uh, just a beer. Noted. When Appreciate I saw that, it, that's buddy. the first thing I thought. Noted. Of. Okay. Good to yeah, know. Yeah, I was like, oh, Chad's got his nice blue eyes, and we're looking at this dark <laughs> beer instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm flattered. Thanks, buddy. All right. Well, I'll have to. I'll have to pick out a new beer. I mean, eventually, I think I should just do a review of Krušovice since it is one of my favorites here. Um, it's okay, really good. Have you found you? You've also found it in a bottle form. Oh yeah, yeah. And they okay. have, and they have different different like strengths of it, right? So one's like five percent, uh, one's yeah, like six right. or seven, so on and so forth. So yeah, right. um, I, I'd like to share a couple of my um, Thanksgiving meals that I enjoy as well, or the sides, or, or what have you. So I, I'm not going to rank them in, in number from 1 to 10 or whatever, um, but just the, the uh, ones that thanks I... Thanks for shitting on my list, but okay. Uh. <laughs> well, y- your, list or is, whatever. Your, list is too, your list is too good for me to follow. I can't, uh, I can't follow up with that act. But some of my favorite Thanksgiving um, foods to eat are, I would say, stuffing, mashed okay. potatoes, and gravy. Mm-hmm. I like a couple deviled eggs as a little appetizer. Is that usually – that seems like the best way to have the devil. Yeah, it's an Because if it's not going to be as an appetizer, don't even bother. Right. Yeah, we, we usually have those ready and out when people Sitting at while, yeah. while final cooking is happening exactly, and all that stuff. Exactly, exactly. Um, obviously uh, – and the, the rolls from Common Grill are also like crack. Those are really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, the other thing I really like um, is obviously – I'm. I'm an I'm an easy man to please, Jared. If you get me the <laughs> the cranberry sauce from the from the can, I think it's not that bad. I'm sure it would be better if you really cooked it up, but that's usually just what my parents have done ever since we, I was a kid. W- hey, I'm not gonna shit on you because yeah, we we do cook like cr- cranberries and stuff, but we put we put real time into making cranberry sauce every year, and we still have freaking family members asking for the can. <laughs> yeah. Right, like like the people we we have people insist upon it, so I, I'm not I'm not gonna blame you for that. Yeah, I'm not the Clearly only there's one. There's something to it, right? And <clears throat> gotta have some pumpkin pie with a little bit of whipped cream and a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Okay, as I said, we're a, a sweet potato right. pie uh, people, but um, I'm a big fan of the sweet potato pie. Granted, I usually wouldn't go for it only because I'd go for the cakes first. I had sweet potato pie this year, mm-hmm. but the other option was a pineapple upside down cake. Ooh, I'm not a huge be, fan of. Okay. Uh, it was not. It was. <clears throat> I'm. I'm not saying it was bad or anything. I'm just. Usually, I'm not a huge pineapple person in my desserts like that. I just fair. didn't want it. Just didn't want it. I don't have a problem with it. Just didn't want it. Right. And there was also pound cake, and I had that too. Actually. So. Nice. I mean, like Thanksgiving. The, the funny thing about Thanksgiving is, <clears throat> although it's to give thanks and uh, be be together with your family. 
It's also a very gluttonous holiday. Oh yeah, like you eat yeah. and you eat and you eat. Do you? I'm wondering though. Do you eat guys, until you're tired, and right. then you sit on the couch with your bun on pants on button. Right. <laughs> and I usually will fall asleep to whatever football game is on. I feel like that's a common American thing. Is there's like a couple teams that will play a Thanksgiving football game. Usually the Lions lose. Uh, Detroit Lions in Michigan usually lose. I don't know if they won or lost this year. Uh, I have it written down. I because I, I was going to mention football. They lost to the Chicago Bears twenty three to sixteen. Oh God, the so Bears. In, yeah, oh, they lost no. to another bad team. Oh, but in okay. uh, in usual uh, Lions tr- his, uh, tradition, they lose. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then also speaking of which, football is a huge part uh, of um, Thanksgiving, and obviously everyone. Plan oh, not everyone, but a lot of Americans plan their day around with the games. Right. So as I mentioned, the Chicago Bears lost or beat excuse me beat the Lions twenty three to sixteen. Mm-hmm. The Atlanta Falcons lost to the New Orleans Saints. Okay. Shit. Who that? Uh, thirty one to seventeen. And the Dallas Cowboys beat the Washington Racial Slurs thirty one to twenty three. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> um, Love it. Another huge part of Thanksgiving holiday uh, is obviously Black Friday. Y- you know, I mean, speaking of gluttony, yeah, there's no more gluttony and greed uh, shown than Americans on on the Friday after Thanksgiving. Black Friday is the uh, which, by the way, we can easily do a whole episode on Black Friday. Maybe but I reason I thought we yeah. could at least kind of talk about it uh-huh. because at this point we might we we'll, we we won't at least do it until next Black Friday. Right, right, <laughs> true. But um, it is the most disgusting day of the year, I would say. It's got to be the most disgusting day of the year in America. Apparently, though, it's gotten tamer just because of the internet. But that doesn't stop people getting... I mean, you Google, which I did, Black Friday arrested. There's still plenty of stories of fights breaking out and people, you know, fighting each other for the last television or whatever. Right. Can Can I add my two cents about this? Of course. So there's that's two, what you're here there's, for, <laughs> right? There's there's two things that really irritates me about about Black Friday, and also when people go shopping on Thanksgiving, like at nighttime. <clears throat> well, Black Friday starts Thursday night, which is awful. I, yeah, it's I like think. An, it's, it's like an all night affair now. It right. starts like at midnight, right? But the other thing, I mean, you can look at it in two ways. I ideally. I think on Thanksgiving, you should either spend time with your friends or your family. You shouldn't have to be at work. Thankful for these deals. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Thankful for this $100 TV. But the other thing is, too, I was thinking about it. I've seen some people on social media post about, you know, oh, don't go shopping. It's really bad to go shopping on Thanksgiving, which I personally agree with that. At the same time, I was thinking about it. And for some people, Thanksgiving maybe isn't a great holiday. You know, what if you right. don't really have a family? What if, you know, what if you don't want to feel like you're a burden because, I don't know, maybe your parents passed away or you live in a different state than your parents? And who knows? Maybe your friends aren't aren't good enough friends to invite you to their Thanksgiving. You know, I'm, Dude, I, yeah. I, 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 can, I totally understand what you're saying. I sometimes feel like I'm like imposing upon uh, my in-laws family where it's like like my sister. When I was in Michigan, she mentioned that obviously she was going to be here for Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and she invited me. And a little part of me, and this is just an instinct I have when people invite me to things in general, but uh, where I, I almost want to be like, you don't you, like, you don't have to invite me. Like, I understand that, um, like, it's very nice of you, but you don't have to do that just because you're like. <laughs> but I was like, I have to tell myself to just take invites and not tell people they don't <laughs> they don't have to. Right. It's like they invited you, just just do it. Don't tell them that they don't have to invite me after they've already invited me somewhere. Right, exactly. <clears throat> but yeah, so, um, and and it's just it's just crazy. Um, how yeah, like one day you're supposed to be giving thanks and being thankful for <laughs> what you have, and literally that evening or the next day, <laughs> you go just buy all this shit. <laughs> I know it's so oh, it's such like a it's so ironic mm-hmm. the uh, the timing of these holidays, but that's just because I mean. For those of you that don't know where Black Friday came from, I mean, you know, uh, the two biggest grossing holidays in um, in America are Halloween, as we mentioned, mm-hmm. is number two. Christmas is number one, and so as soon as Thanksgiving is over, in 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 the consumerism, in, in the way that our our 
society works. It's immediately like you, they start, kind of start ramping into Christmas season slowly after Halloween. But once Thanksgiving is over, it's Christmas time. Yeah, I hate and, that. Um, and like and so like that's just like we're like that's where they really start hitting you hard with like get your presents and that's where that's where mm. this whole Black Friday comes from. I and that's where they that. okay. And they have these obviously you know they have these insane deals to get like kind of start off the I think that sort of I, Grant hey by the way I'm not this is not research I'm just talking right now right <laughs> so you, you the way you said oh I did not know this made it seem like I'm actually spitting facts uh, let me make it clear I'm. A rambler on a podcast. <laughs> uh, we do not claim to be professionals or no. We do not claim to uh, have the facts on anything, really. Um, sometimes we do, but not on this. <laughs> that makes sense, um, though. I mean, that definitely makes right. sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I thought it did. It felt like it did to me. Um. Okay. Yeah. No, that's all I got. <laughs> well, yeah. Did you want to mention something about a parade? We you talked about a parade earlier. There's always a Thanksgiving parade, like yep. the Macy's Day Macy's parade, Day all that parade stuff. which is a big deal. Parades are stupid. Who goes to parades? Every time I look at, I don't even look at the parade on TV, but when I do, I'm like, who are these people? Right. And why are you there? Right. I mean, the the thing, the thing about the Thanksgiving Day parades, I think, is it's really good for a lot of. Like, I think kids really enjoy watching it. You know, they grow up watching it. I never really grew up watching it. I don't I don't really get it either, but, you know, who am I to judge? Listen, if you're going to elbow people to get to the front of a line, at least get a free television out of the deal. And do it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you might be going to jail. You never know. You know what's funny, though? Uh, speaking of Black Friday, here in the Czech Republic, I've been seeing Black Friday signs all over the place, right? What's ironic? Sneaking over. No, no, no. What's ironic is I asked my students about this because I was like, I was like, why do I see all these Black Friday signs? And they're like, yeah, actually, Black Friday isn't. It's not like the the Friday after Thanksgiving. They just have sales here on like Friday, sometimes on Thursday. Like, oh, it's just a oh, it's just a so, happens to be a yeah, sale so on that's a Friday. Just what they call it? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Crazy. This happens to be Friday, right? <laughs> Uh, okay. So that was kind of interesting to learn about here. Different different cultural meaning of Black Friday. Uh, yeah. For sure. But the but the other thing, though, that I do like about Thanksgiving is you should, I think, rela- uh, reflect about what are you thankful for? Mm-hmm. And I want to know, Jared, what are – sorry to put you on the spot, but, uh, <laughs> you know, what what are you thankful for? I mean, I said it almost like a joke earlier, but I am thankful for this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've always been good friends, but I feel like I know you very well now. That's true. Uh, we talk all the time. I like that, and I like that we do this. Me too. Um, it's fun. Um, uh, you know, uh, this is gonna, uh, you're gonna make me get cheesy. I hate getting cheesy. Yes, this is why I want to ask this question. <laughs> Things like this, like whenever I, th- I'm always thankful for my parents, because mm-hmm. like whenever, like I always want to say I'm thankful for like where I'm at in life and that I have like a good job and all that stuff, but like. You know, my parents taught me just about everything. And, like, my parents are successful people that I, I want to emulate success-wise. Because if I could do, like, as well as they're doing, then I'm doing more than okay. Right. So, like, I, was, I, I, I almost started to say I'm thankful for, like, me being in Philadelphia for three and a half years. and mm-hmm. like, But really, all that just goes back to me being thankful for my parents. So okay. that's, that, 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 um, that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm thankful for uh, fuel inject direct port fuel injection. That's a Fast and Furious reference. Oh, there you go. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite get it, but that's okay. It's a Fast and Furious reference. Uh, yeah, no, I think those are probably big ones. And I'm also um, thankful for uh, like playing piano, and then I've gotten into that. I was just going to ask a you hobby. about that. Uh huh. That's a hobby I'm really happy that I that I'm actually you know into. And I you know I pay for it myself. Obviously, I'm an adult, but like you know like no one's forcing me to do it but also what i like about paying for it myself is that uh it kind of it, it makes it hard to slack off because it's like well why are you doing this then right you know? right <laughs> you're just wasting your own money it's not even like my parents are forcing me to do this mm-hmm. when i'm like in elementary school it's like yeah so i like that i like that i have the motivation to do it and that i'm actually doing it and i seem to be making good progress it's, and i think it's a it's a good that's like a good hobby to ha- kind of invest in yes you especially know? as someone like me that likes to be um that tends to be a loner. It's a good uh, right activity to uh, to keep my my brain occupied when I'm uh, as a loner. Because sometimes uh, you know 
loner and 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 why and like being alone. The, I think not a, it's always alone, but like when someone that doesn't mind being alone a lot. I, I think one of the difficulties is like a like a not letting your mind wander or not getting mm-hmm. like a like not getting like a complacent. I don't know. Yeah, I sound like a. See, this is why I don't like getting cheesy because then I feel like I'm preaching. You're not preaching. <laughs> and I'm like, you're good. And I always feel like I need to remind people. Like, keep in mind, I don't know anything, but I don't need to say that every time. What are you thankful for? Oh man, so so many things. I mean, I I would say the first thing I'm thankful for, um, you know, you, you said a lot of the ones that I'm thankful for as well. So I'm gonna say a couple different ones. Um, I'm very, parents, well, podcast, obviously parents, podcast, guitar as well, instead of piano but mm-hmm. guitar. However, I am really thankful um, for my health. You know, um, I think a lot of people who, if they're healthy, they, they kind of take it for granted, you know? Um, yeah. And so I'm really thankful for my health. You know, I could have health problems or all sorts of bad things. And um, I'm fairly healthy, don't have any serious health problems. I also am really, really thankful for all of the amazing people that I've met so far in the Czech Republic to make my stay much easier, the adjustment go more smoothly. I'm very thankful for my for my boss and my mentor here in the Czech Republic. She's amazing. Oh, yeah, how's she been? I haven't heard about her in a long she's, time. She, I think she's been great. I mean, it seems like everything's going. Do you good. guys still keep in contact? I mean, we Re- regularly. I mean, we see each other every day, and I teach a couple of classes. Oh yeah, with she, her, you so. guys are coworkers. You yeah, work yeah. at the same. We place. sit in the same <laughs> office, so yeah, we see right. each other a lot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'm very thankful for all of my colleagues at the school. I'm also really thankful for the students that I've had the opportunity to work with because they're, they're, you know, really good kids. They work hard. Um, a lot of them also have a really good sense of humor. So that makes my life a little easier as well. Mm -hmm. And I would say the last thing that I'm thankful for is just having had the opportunity to travel and learn so many things, not only about myself, but about the world, other languages, other cultures, because I think it's really important to get out of your comfort zone, get out of your hometown that you've spent however many years, and go see some see some new things and meet new people. I think it's really important. Um, and obviously, I'm thankful for the other things you mentioned as well. Right. Uh, my parents. Your uh, parents, yes. Not <laughs> mine, just yours. Um, your piano playing, not my guitar playing. <laughs> Correct. You got it. Exactly. Having me as your podcast co-host, it all makes sense. I mean, that, I get that it. is 100% true. I, I can't imagine doing a podcast with anybody else. That's for sure, buddy. Well, likewise, man. Um, this is so cheesy now. Now it's just us like telling each other how much we love each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's kind of sometimes a, a nice thing about Thanksgiving is to bring the walls down and get a little cheesy, you know. With yeah, your and clearly it's hard for me to. Uh, it's hard for like like it is like a thing for me to acknowledge things I'm thankful for or be grateful about things. So maybe it is useful for me to actually. Right be forced in a on a podcast to do it right i think the other <laughs> thing i think the other thing is too um it's just sometimes good to reflect you know reflect yes. about you know I, think I don't do that enough me either and i think uh, unless unless you are suffering from you know mental illness physical illnesses um you're in severe poverty as i mean you know if you have Clothes on your on your back, a, a roof over your head, and food on the table. I would say, for the most part, you probably have a couple things that you should be thankful for that we might take for granted. You know, for sure. I mean, we're both lucky. We have amazing jobs as professional podcasters, but also as um, <laughs> doing a side what we gig do. at a cubicle somewhere. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, so I think it's good to reflect, and I think that's a great thing about the holiday of Thanksgiving. For sure. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, now let's talk about music. Let's do let's, it. Uh, let's lighten up a little bit, Chad. We've been getting pretty... Uh, we should lighten up. We've been getting pretty uh, deep here, talking about how much we love each other. It's true. Um, but I think it is very important to lighten up. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing I've really enjoyed about this um, You know, near, I guess, four-day weekend I've had, because mm-hmm. I've had off since you know Wednesday after work. I got home at like or whatever you know what no i got to actually got home at like nine at piano but anyway you know i i've been off since thursday 
And uh, it's been a, sort of a mini vacation because I haven't gone anywhere. It's been very relaxing. You know, I, I didn't really have to do any work for Thanksgiving right. to show up. Um, and I stumbled upon this song by Parcels, a group from originally from uh, Australia. Yep. However, based in Berlin. Yep, I saw that. And it's called Lighten Up. All and one word. I ri- yes, L I G H T E N U P. One word. Uh-huh. Uh, it'll be on our on our uh, Twitter. Mm-hmm. I saw this band originally in a uh, on, on a YouTube channel called Colors, mm-hmm. and Colors is a um, like they have. I've sent you stuff from there before. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I think so. But they have like they feature a lot of international music. But it's like they have like it's like hip hop. They have it's 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 very like a uh, like current music, but it's very international too. Like there's like a French trap rapper there sometimes or something like that. But anyway, this was a band that I saw, and they had um, their their this vibe was very like I was just first I was like oh I I couldn't tell if they were putting out a character or not because they were they were dressed like they like they kind of look like the Beatles to be honest with you. Yeah, they look they straight out of the seventies. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, they they For look sure. like very sixties slash seventies, and their vibe clearly once again sounds very sixties. Like it has that sort of sixties, but also a little almost slight discoy sound to it, mm-hmm. which I guess is seventies. Yeah, and um, they're wearing like they dress like it as well as I said, and the song is called "Lighten Up," and it's just it's a great. It just it sounds great, great sixties aesthetic, and it's about just what you'd imagine, lightening up and just yep. uh, you know, not taking everything so seriously, and. I think what I like about it is that uh, the sound is very similar to da- Daft Punk to me. Yeah. It sounds very similar to Daft Punk. And they're actually which, signed I mean, to a French record label. Okay. Believe it or not. And, and I was about to say also many people have stolen a Daft Punk sound. Like, for example, you know that Tim Mish album that yeah. you've been listening mm-hmm. to? Uh, the song TikTok. Do you know uh, that song? Yeah, yeah. Album? yeah, yeah. I really like that song. But it has a very Daft Punky sound to me as well. That's fair. I could see that. And uh, but but I mean they're legends in the game, so people oh, are, sure. might might steal their style a little for bit sure. sometimes. You know what the genres of of parcels are? Uh, what would no? I do not. Electro pop, disco, okay, soul, and chill wave. Chill wave. I've never really heard chill wave. Me either, I mean, obviously but... you can. You can infer what that means. Right. But. <laughs> Makes sense. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. uh, so chill wave is a micro genre that kind of started in the late two or late 2000s. Um, it is characterized by faded or dreamy retro pop sound. Right. Escape was, lyrics uh, about the beach. I was going to say uh-huh. almost probably like I would imagine chill wave would almost would, oh, excuse me, probably elicit like a um, psychedelic vibe. Maybe could be. Yeah. But this song has a cool groove. Um, yeah, it has flute in it, which is kind of nice. Yeah, you don't see flute that often nope. these days. And I like the guitar part. <laughs> the guitar part kind of reminds me of like um, um, Niles Rogers when he was playing with Daft Punk, like on the song "Get Lucky." Uh oh, right. It's got I don't yes, guitar yes, which riff. is a very '60s kind of sound to it. Uh huh. Yeah, it's really cool though. Absolutely. So yeah, so check out "Lighten Up" by Parcels. Um, yep, it's absolutely fantastic. Well, Jared, I uh, I needed to find an appropriate Czech word, and this was a very easy one because I say this word a lot. And this word is djekuji. Ooh, I was about to say djekuji. No, nope, djekuji. <laughs> okay. Do you know what, what this is, means? What, what's that? Can you give me a clue? Um, I mean, or use it in a sentence. I mean, I I would say it when my waiter or waitress brings me my food, and I'd go djekuji. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm surprised we haven't gotten that uh-huh. one yet. Yep. I uh, wanted to save it specifically for this episode. I've been yeah been saving it. Uh, but what's interesting is Yakuyi is more formal than I hear in my so town. So it's thank you, uh-huh. not thanks. Right. Kind and of. I, yeah, and I hear in my town, though, a lot of people won't say Yakuyi. They'll say Yakuyu with the, like a U ending. That's the uh, casual? I, I Well, the casual one is actually DK. Oh, okay. Okay. So they have these oh, different kind of layers, but I usually just say "dikuyi." Um, I also like um, the phrase um, "dikuyeme." That means "we thank you." Mm. So you should end the podcast with that. Oh, that's a great idea. I like it. That's a great idea. Well, Jared, yeah. um, I have a couple good uh, Thanksgiving jokes for you. 
Um, no originals, unfortunately, but they're still pretty good ones, I think. So here we go. Why did the turkey cross the road? <laughs> to get away from the Thanksgiving table. Basically, table. yeah, it was Thanksgiving, and he wanted to convince <laughs> the people he was a chicken. <laughs> so, the why did the why did the chicken cross the road is i don't uh, how did that become a thing it is the like the most played out uh I reference know. i don't know and, and no joke i've ever heard involving that has ever been funny that was actually a pretty good one i will say i got i got uh, i got one for you why that did, was a turkey one so it's different right well why did the chicken <laughs> cross the playground why is that to get to the other slide Oh my god! <laughs> right, because it's to get to the other side. That's why he crossed. No, the I road. get it, but yeah, <laughs> maybe our listeners don't. But yeah, I don't know why that's a thing either. All right, so another one for you. Why did the police arrest the turkey? Why is that? Because they suspected foul play. Ooh, it's a good I little like wordplay one. one. I was trying to think of like. Uh, like something that involving gobble or like feather right. or like feather crimes against humanity or something. Oh, that would be good. That'd be pretty good. All right. And my last one for you is what do you wear to a Thanksgiving dinner? Oh, sweatpants. I mean, that's uh, realistically, <laughs> yes. But no, it is a har, a har vest. Oh. Since it's supposed to, my mom nervous. likes to rock a um, a festive vest. Nice. Like I don't know if she, I don't know if she thinks she's funny or if she's or if she's serious. But well, she's not that funny, so I think she might be serious. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but like she has like a I, usually she has some sort of fall related one, but mm -hmm. she always has like some sort of tacky looking Christmas vest. Okay, fair enough. I saw a bunch of Christmas sweaters actually while I was in Prague this weekend. Almost bought one, but I didn't. Why not? I was I was tempted because. I've already bought too much junk already, Jared. I don't. <laughs> is it? What do you mean by Christmas sweater? Does it say like Merry Christmas it on it? It was green, and it had a beard coming down from the neck spot. So it was oh, like okay. you were Santa, or, or I think maybe probably not Santa, but an elf. You put it on, and you have this white beard coming down. Because that's the thing. Christmas sweaters are fun, but you can only wear them for like two months, or not, not even two even months, two like months. a month. Yeah. I have one actually. Luckily, it's right here, so I can show it to you. I actually have two of them because it's a, from a car show I, I watch, uh -huh. and it was like a cool design. I was like, I don't have a Christmas sweater. Nice. And they sent it to me, and it was damaged, mm -hmm. but not damaged enough where I couldn't wear it. It was just like damaged like at the seam here. It, okay. it came oh, ripped. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But it's still very – sorry, I knocked you my can, microphone. It's still very wearable, you but I'll show you what that it looks too. like. Cool. Yeah, I can. I just not a good sewer, but I can. They sent me another one for free. Nice. So I have one that I never wear, and I just wear this one all the time. There you go. But I'm about to show it to you right now. Oh, nice. The smoking so, tire. Yeah, it's a car show that I watch. Nice. And so, like, I saw that, like, it was like, oh, it's a Christmas sweater. I watch all this guy's shows. I'll support his thing. And um, it's subtle in there. So, like, it's a Christmas sweater or, like, the actual title is subtle within there. And so uh, I was like, I, I could use a – just in case I ever have to go to an ugly, uh, ugly uh, sweater party. I'm still crossing my fingers that someone will invite me to a party at some point. There you go. Yeah, that's I, not a significant other or my sister, <laughs> right? I think I think with Christmas sweaters, sometimes they obviously the ugly sweaters are funny, but they go way over the top sometimes. That's for sure. Oh yeah, with like full on like bells and yeah. shit dangling off yeah. of them, where you can't make make a move without them exactly making noise or like lights on but, them. You'll see every right, now and again. Right. The funniest thing I saw was, um, it was like a picture online where. They had a they had like an ugly Christmas sweater thing up like a party right, and this guy had mm -hmm. just a red sweater and he taped a mirror to it. <laughs> That's funny. So I thought that was pretty that was pretty uh, <laughs> sneaky, pretty good. It's a subtle like way to that. burn people. I like it. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> well, we hope you all have enjoyed our Thanksgiving episode today. Uh, I do have a quote to end us with, and it is a Native American proverb, which I also thought would be appropriate. Since, uh, you know, that give credit where credit is due. Exactly, exactly. And the Native American proverb is give thanks for unknown blessings already on their way. Well, yeah, there you go. It's hard to give thanks, as you mentioned before. Uh, do, does your family do that? I mean, I guess it's a little, I mean, they could still do it, but it's a little sad when it's just you and your da uh, mom, mom and dad. I, but I, do you guys like go around the do. table? Um, uh, 
Because we don't really. We have before, but it's been a while. I think it's also been a while for us as well. And that is a tradition yeah. I think some families definitely do every year. For sure. As they go around the table and give thanks. Um, yeah. For us, it was always um, my my grandmother. And then when she passed, my great aunt would say a Thanksgiving prayer. That was always. Um, yeah, we get that too. Yeah. You know, once again, from the South. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, but I think it's important to, uh, I th- I'm a firm believer that if you um, give thanks and you send out good vibes into the universe, good vibes will come back your way. Yeah, you think so? I think so. I mean, I've been very lucky so far in my life, and I feel like I try to help others and send out good vibes, and maybe maybe that has something to do with it. Who knows? Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, that, it, there's no denying that just a positive attitude is a better way to live life. That's true. In general. So, yeah. A positive attitude goes with – or, come, you know uh, – Comes with throwing out good vibes and whatnot, as you said. Oh, definitely, most definitely. Chill vibes, bro, as your shirt says. That's right. I'm not. I'm not wearing that one today. Oh, I yeah, got you're a, not wearing a Teton it. guitar shirt on today. Yeah, where's Teton? Uh, uh, the Teton Mountains. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, oh. Mm-hmm. you went to like a music camp? No, 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 no. This I was in Montana and I saw this uh, this shirt in a guitar shop. And thought it was a cool shirt. Oh, okay, but yeah. I was really hoping. I was about to ask you if you had any like weird stories from camp. I mean, I did go to I did go to a music camp, but uh, that's a that's another conversation. Did it get weird? No, you don't have to tell me any stories. No, it never got weird. It was always a lot of fun. Not, okay, it was never the stereotype of. It like, wasn't like band kids. camp. No, and and it was right. just a day camp, so it wasn't like we. Stayed oh overnight. yeah, it's hard to get weird when you got to go home at that's the end of the day. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is fair. That is very true. Yeah, without a doubt. Well. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed this Thanksgiving edition of the Untranslatable Podcast. Um, and try to spread some love and spread some thanks to your friends and family um, each and every day if you can. It's always good. And uh, please follow us on uh, Twitter at Untranslatable1. We'd love to hear what you're thankful for. Also, um, subscribe to our Instagram uh, page, Untranslatable Podcast. You can shoot us an email, untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. And uh, as Jared requested, yakuya me, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs>